hello all. Welcome. It is finally time. I'm sure you've all been looking for this all week. It's the most popular night of the week for NASCAR YouTube fans. It is time for the weekly NASCAR live podcast. And we are going live here, bringing in our guests here tonight. I am Danny B. Danny B. Talks. I'm your host for tonight. Last week we were on Double Eighty Dud's channel. And now we're here. We've got a lot of things to talk about tonight. And I think uh, you've probably seen the news by now. Um, you can kind of get an idea of basically my shirt and what's behind me, what the two subjects are going to be this week. And now I'm going to toss it on over to my friend, the Asperg. What's up, everyone? Uh, it's definitely been a big week already. You guys might have, some of you probably saw me on uh, on Monday. So that was pretty fun. Uh, real quick about the special guest. I realized I sent him that we were starting at 8 central time and not eastern time. So dumbass move on my part. <laughs> and with that, I'm handing it over to Eric. <laughs> well, that's okay. We'll be waiting here uh, with with on the edge of our seats for him. How's it going, everybody? Hope you all are having a wonderful evening. Hopefully, we can make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more entertaining. Yeah, obviously, a lot of great things to talk about. Things per very close and personal to my heart. So I'm thrilled to get started. And uh, yeah, wait, can't wait for our special guest. Have we have we told them who the guest is, or is this going to be like a surprise? I forget. No, we haven't told told them. We, uh, we've okay. told them who it wasn't. We've told them it's not Kamikaze. So please oh, no, stop no. asking us if it's Kamikaze. Not not this week, at least. You never yeah. know. The guy can the guy can pop up anywhere at any time. Possible. Hey, wink, hey. wink. Kamikaze is not out of the question at this point. There has been some Twitter chatter here and there, so I know he's very I know he's very well requested. Maybe in the near future. Yep. But anyway, that's me. How's it going, guys? What, what are we talking about here tonight? Oh, I, I think we got to start with Kenza. Oh. I think, yes. Well, I was going to lay it in a little bit better. We should talk about this thing right here behind me, this number six here. Formerly Trevor Bain, kind of currently. Trevor Bain's going to a part-time schedule now in the Cup Series. Um, honestly, his performance has been failing a lot. And you got to understand, this is Jack Roush. Look at what happened to Colin Braun and uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. a few years ago. Colin Braun, Ricky Stenhouse were the future for for Jack Roush Racing. Um, Colin Braun wrecked a lot of race cars. He immediately got the boot. Ricky Stenhouse got the boot but was given a chance to kind of not go away permanently. Now Trevor Bain is kind of in a similar situation. Ricky Stenhouse, he's, he's winning races for Jack. He's not going to have to worry about that so much. He's won the Xfinity Series championships for him now. But now Trevor Bain's in a weird position where he's got to kind of kind of pr prove that he's still worthy of being with Jack Roush. So I think he needs to make a, he needs to make a, the most of what he's got left in this season and hope that there's something there for next season, whether it's going back down to the lower series or if it's maybe, maybe getting to do a third car. He would be lucky if he got to do that. Yeah, that, that would be uh, interesting. I think, uh, yeah, just jumping right into it. Um, Trevor Bain, he has not performed. I mean, that Roush Fenway Racing as an organization since about 2014 has, since really 2015, I guess, was the first year where they really didn't look very good. Ever since then, they have been just a shell of their former selves. And that being said, Trevor Bain has obviously been the worst of the two or three cars they've had during that time. So when you're the worst car on a team that's struggling heavily, uh, at some point, people are going to turn to you and wonder if you're part of the problem. And I don't want to knock Trevor Bain. I really like Trevor Bain. I always really thought he was a great personality, a great, you know, just a good guy to root for. But the the results speak for themselves. He's not really uh, – he's not deserving of a top cup ride. Not saying Roush really is a top cup ride right now, but it, it is in, a, in some sense, in a, in a historical sense. So – it's shocking that it's coming nine weeks into the season, middle of the season, not even on an off week that this announcement's coming. That's shocking to me. But uh, if this had happened, say, at the end of this season, I would not have been surprised. If this has happened in this past off season, I wouldn't have really been surprised. Uh, but it is surprising that it's coming now. It is actually, I'm surprised Matt Kenseth is back. I had never expected him to come back after Homestead last year. I thought, you know, at best he would race a, like a, when Suarez injured his thumb, I thought, oh, maybe they'll bring him in for one race, but I didn't even think that would happen. I thought there was a better chance of Christopher Bell or Brian Priest getting in that car. you know. So to see him come back with Roush Fenway Racing, I'll go into it a little more in detail later why I really am surprised by it. But just in a nutshell, looking at Trevor Bain, I think I woke up early this morning, and by early I mean at 8.30 for me. That's early for me. I didn't have class until 12.30, so that is early for me. But I woke up at 8.30 because the press conference was at 9 central, and, uh, and I, I was watching the press conference live. And basically, I thought it was 
a lot of people were, were, were speculating that maybe, you know, Trevor Bain, you know, he, he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis five, six years ago, four or five years ago. I don't know how long ago. And uh, people are thinking that had a, something, a factor in it. And from what everyone at Roush was saying, no, it didn't. In fact, they even said when they went and told Trevor Bain the news not that long ago or a couple weeks ago, he was really upset by the news and didn't and wanted to race full time. So I think it's, you know, it's clearly a performance thing. They were very clear that they think Matt Kenseth is a driver that you put him in that car. He can really give you a baseline as to how good your team is right now. And I think clearly Roush is not as good as they want to be. I think they'll run a little better with Matt Kenseth behind one of their cars. I think they're hoping with both him driving this year, potentially a year or two down the line. But then after he's, he's done driving, acting in some sort of managing role or some sort of mentoring role, uh, that he could be beneficial to the young drivers they have coming up. Like they have Ty Majeski, I know, is starting to get some screen time. Obviously, Ryan Reed's been in their organization in the Xfinity Series for a long time. Maybe some other Ford drivers uh, as well I'm not, I, that I can't think of. Uh, I think it'll be really interesting to see what Matt Kenseth's role is going forward because everything Matt Kenseth said at the end of the last season did not point to this happening. So I'm just, that's why I'm really surprised. He said he would only come back if it was with a championship level team, if the situation was right. Everything I've heard from him the last couple months has been how happy he is to be, you know, spending time off with his kids and family. So to hear him come to the Roush like this, a car that isn't really that competitive, I'm, I'm stunned. Jack must have offered him a pretty penny to try and come in and save his organization. So I don't know. In a nutshell, that's, that's my take on this whole situation. Yo, um, with, with that being said, that it's not uh, health reasons, I I, I want to and granted it's different situation, different series. But who was the last driver that Roush benched part time? Uh, that was in a full time ride for him uh, with the like, Rick, older Rick, drivers. Ricky Stenhouse, I think. Mm-hmm. And what did he do the next year? He got his butt in gear and he went out and won. Yep, mm-hmm. I'm not saying Trevor Bain's gonna win, but I'm saying that. If he does bring him back next year, like just going from the, um, from more of the the, the perspective of Trevor Bain being taken out, because uh, I know we're all we've all been talking about uh, Kenza then and rightfully so, uh, but at the same time with Bain out, like I think this is the crossroads of his career. It's like it's either if he is going to be one of the biggest busts ever, which he already is, or if he can turn it around in some way. Granted, Roush's equipment isn't good enough to. Uh, to show his full capability, to say the least. Right. But I mean, and that's just see, it, that's what it reminds me of. Bain is in a weird situation because unlike David Reagan, the last full time driver to six car, David Reagan had the opportunity to go into front row motorsports. Well, front row is already a really low team that doesn't have enough funding to really run the two cars they have. I honestly think they would do better if they tried to just run one. Um, but even then, it's not even like Bain can maybe go run for them, honestly, because they've already got Michael McDowell and David Reagan. Um, and honestly, if you had to cut one of those two, I think you'd want to go with David Reagan. He's got two wins. He's got more experience, I think. Um, overall, I think he's just a little bit better driver than McDowell. Um, but that's just me. I think if, if you get McDowell in the right car on a road course, that's a whole different story. But, you know, with that, there's no room for him over there. There's really no room for Bain anywhere right now. Um, he might have to do something like Casey Kane did and just go to go to a lower team looking for someone. Um, not saying he should do it, but maybe if he could bring in a little bit more funding for BK Racing, maybe that's an opportunity for him down the road. Uh, but I don't want to see him go. To, I don't want to see him go to that team. That 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 team has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, weird stuff with them. But if he can if he can do it, I would I would love to see him stay in with, with Roush in some capacity, even if it is going down to the Xfinity series level. I like Jacob's comment there. I think it brings up an interesting point. Is it fair to call Trevor Bain a bust? Because if not for him winning that 2011 Daytona 500 out of nowhere, he wasn't really, if I recall, wasn't really on anyone's radar. Nobody came into the 2011 season like, hey, we've heard, have you heard about this kid Trevor Bain with the Wood Brothers? Like, oh, he could do something. He never really, I think we gave him expectations after he won that race. and that's. But, but going into that 2011 season, he had no expectations behind him whatsoever. I almost wonder, it was a little, obviously I think he got better rides than he deserved because of that win. So I guess for that reason, it's fair to call him a bust because he doesn't didn't perform uh, in decent equipment. But at the same time, I think, you know, it, it's, when he first came into NASCAR, I don't think anyone had him on any but on our radars, and I, I, so it's weird to call him a. I mean, he is a bust in the sense that he has not worked out to this point. It's unlikely he will ever be a 
major playoff contender or anything of the sort. But it's just, you know, it's weird to call a guy who was like really came out of nowhere, really didn't have any hype behind him until it was all of a sudden loaded on him because of one. I mean, I'm not going to say it was a luck win. It's Daytona 500. You need some luck, but he clearly had skill and had a good car, but all because of that one race, that's really what gave him all the hype. I almost think it's like the fans faults like us for, for putting this pressure on him when it really shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah, and I, I just think especially the t- the time he came around, the time he was you know introduced in the Roush system was still when Roush was was up there. I mean, because he was in the Xfinity, I think, in 2010. You know, and right year I had Edwards that Biffle. Sounds about right. I don't, I don't know the exact year. Trevor then, Trevor Bain debuted in 2009 for Michael Walter Racing, it looked like he would be a great driver because he start he started off and I think he got the pole at Iowa. I think that was his first race with them. Led a lot of laps until a situation with the pace car driver messing him up really ruined his race for him, uh, which is still pretty hilarious looking back at it. Uh, and it really made you wonder, okay, do we really need to let a uh, guest drive the pace car? Um, but anyways, he he showed a lot of he showed a lot of potential there for Michael Walter, but and ultimately. It just wasn't there for him in the end. That car tried to go to Travis Pastrana. That didn't work out too well. Um, it's just been a whole big mess, really. And and uh, and yeah, other than Pastrana, yeah. But I mean, the, once he won the 2011 Daytona 500, his name was kind of made a little bit, but it just he just hasn't done much since then. Yeah. I mean, even even 2011 was a year where a few weird drivers got wins. You had. Trevor Bain won to 500. Regan Smith won Darlington. Paul Menard won Indy. But honestly, out of out of those three, the ones who have had the most success since then, I feel, are, well, Regan Smith in the Xfinity Series level. But overall, I think in Cup, Paul Menard has done the best of those three random winners in 2011. And then Trevor Bain's just still down here at the bottom. Have any of them even Regan Smith, did he win any other cup races after 2011? Like, Menard hasn't won since then. Bain hasn't no, won since then. But at least Menard <laughs> has still had a lot more top yeah. fives and top tens. No, I'm not then. arguing. Menard's the best of the three of them today. It's just, I, it is interesting now to think about it. that year. I remember it was like all these first time winners. Whoa, and look where they are today. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 do think, I do think Menard's getting closer to getting a second one, though. He could get one this year. He could steal one somewhere, but I don't know. Kansas. I'm telling you, it's Kansas. Oh well, yeah, maybe we'll see. Well, and and uh, the thing uh, with Bain is like Bain performed between good and adequately with Roush's equipment in in the Xfinity series. series. He did. I mean, he still showed flashes in the twenty one car at part time, but every year he's been in Roush, he's just been steadily regressing. I mean, it's it's dumber mistakes. It's it's worse running. It's as driver errors. You know, it's not the team. It's you know as much as that. He just doesn't do well. No, I think he know? is. He's a. He makes me think of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Before he settled down and got good, he's a streaky driver who makes a lot of mistakes. But I'm also I'll cut him a little bit of slack. You came to Roush Fenway. I want to say was it 2015? Was that the first year he was with Roush in the six car? I don't know. I, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. That was the first year. That year in 15. Yeah. The, well, the, Edwards left in 14. So by the time 15 <laughs> rolled around, Roush really wasn't who they used to be. And so no. I'll cut him a little bit of slack there that I think he joined Roush at their worst. Well, yeah. at, so far at the worst. He's been with Roush now the last three or four years during their worst period ever, probably. Mm-hmm. So, so I'll cut him a little bit of slack there. But that being said, he's still not been as good as Stenhouse. He wasn't as good as Biffle for the first couple of years. He's still the worst on that team. So if someone was going to get replaced on that team, it's going to be Trevor Bain. I think the reason that they, got, uh, they pulled Kenseth back out is because I don't know how much money they, Roush they, offered him, but, it, I mean, he draws in sponsors. I mean, obviously with what we see today. They need somebody who, even if Matt can't go out and win in that car this year, they need somebody who can at least get in the top ten a few times. Yeah. No, yeah. And you're, if, you're right. Well, if any of the retired people left, I think I went over this on Monday, but you know, Gordon's too, I, I think, is too far removed, and he wouldn't. Junior, with a baby on the way and concussion, he's not coming out of retirement. Stewart no. was god-awful his last three or four years. He's not going yeah. to. Edwards is lost in a farm somewhere in Missouri, and and that just pretty much you know Biffle's you know peeping on on his family, and then you got uh, 
Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth, Kenseth was the obvious mind. choice. Yeah, he, like Matt, in, in hindsight, yeah. Matt is the one who. Matt well, is the one who didn't want to retire. He did not choose to retire. He was kind of forcefully kicked out. Well, so was Biffle, but I mean, he wasn't good. So. Well, well, no. So <laughs> Biff, Biffle was offered a chance to resign of with Jack Roush, but he chose. Oh, it was. Yeah. Damn, that shows how desperate they were with how awful he was the last few years. Yeah, no, they asked. They, I'm pretty sure they asked him if he wanted to resign, and he just declined not to because it was not going to be in a good enough car to win. Anyone else think that Greg Biffle would be a great fit at the NSA? Hmm. We need to we need to drop bashing on Biffle so much because I mean he, he he had like other other than that he's 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 been a pretty likable driver over the years. Yeah, but I like it, it is uh, an easy target. I think Kenseth is the obvious choice just because of his past connections with Roush and uh, and with Mark Martin specifically. Uh, the press comments. I don't know if you guys watched any of the clips from the press comments, but uh, like Mark Martin was there. Like he present he introduced Matt Kenseth basically, and uh, Mark Martin and Kenseth go way back. They. Mark Martin was really the guy that gave Kenseth his shot with Roush in, in, in the Xfinity and then in the Cup Series back in the late 90s. And uh, I think it was – the two of them are very similar. They've been really good friends. And I, I read or I listened to a clip on uh, – I think it was on the Sirius XM radio. I just heard the clip. I don't, I don't have XM radio. Are you kidding me? But, uh, but uh, Mark Martin was talking about how the deal went down, and it was basically Jack Roush about a month ago called Mark Martin and said, hey, do you think Matt would be interested in doing this thing? And Mark Martin's like – Okay, yeah, I don't know. He might be. So he, that's how, like, he was he was the connecting connector between Roush and Kenseth. It was Mark Martin, and I think Roush, knowing the connections with Mark Martin, with Matt Kenseth, the three of them have a good connection, and I think especially Mark Martin and Matt Kenseth, and it sounds like Mark Martin is also kind of starting to get more involved with Roush racing, at least going forward, kind of the behind-the-scenes role. And it sounds like Kenseth, once he's done driving, whether it be in eight months, whether it be in two years, three years, will probably fill a similar role, which I'm just surprised because – like I said earlier, all of last year, this is not what Matt Kenseth said he would ever do. Like he was always asked, like, would you ever like be a team owner? And I know this isn't quite the same thing, but it's it's still kind of like a front office type job almost that it sounds like he could be stepping into. And he sounds all excited about it. like, oh, I can't wait to work with Roush into the future, you know, all that. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm happy for him, excited for him. It'll be fun. It'll make me want to root for Roush Fenway in the future. Like I always I've always liked Roush, but it's like you know, last year he said, you know, I would never be a team owner. I don't think I'd ever go to the racetrack if I wasn't racing. And I'm like, well, it sounds like now he's accepted that in two or three years he could be doing just that. And that's why this announcement's so surprising to me. That's what makes me think Roush, Jack Roush is – Jack Roush has money. He's a big guy in Ford, not just in NASCAR, just Ford in general. He's a big name. He has he has a lot of money, I'm sure. This sounds like it's almost like a, latch ditch, a last-ditch effort to save his race team because Roush Fenway, at the rate they were going – Honestly, they might have been completely out of NASCAR in five years, if you ask me. The way right they'd been going, Stenhouse looked a little better lately, but at the end of the day, I, I don't see them maintaining enough to keep going in five years. By bringing in Matt Kenseth, by offering him enough money or whatever it was to get him to, to, to take this role, they're hoping. Kenseth, their best years for Roush were years Kenseth drove for him. When Kenseth left and then when Edwards left, they got way worse. When Matt Kenseth went to Joe Gibbs Racing the very next year, their three cars won like 14 or 15 races. So, so it's, I'm not saying that's all Kenseth. That's obviously not all Matt Kenseth. Part of that was the Gen 6, and Gibbs just had a handle on it. But Matt Kenseth, everyone, everyone in the garage area agrees. Matt Kenseth knows knows race cars, knows them inside and out. He used to work on race cars. He's driven race cars since he was, like, 15. He knows how to – he knows race cars. So I think this is uh, Roush basically bringing in the big guns and hoping that Matt Kenseth's guidance, mentorship, whatever it is, will make them – at least close to what they were in the mid to late 2000s again in the next couple of years. And I don't know. I hope it works for him, obviously, but I don't know if it will. And Honestly, I, th I think Kenseth oh. had uh, sort of the Mark Martin effect like back in 2007 and eight, where it's like, you know, Mark Martin was like, I'm stepping down from full-time driving. You know, Matt, obviously a different situation, but I think uh, him taking this opportunity versus a uh, championship level car, I think that's more of, you know, like he, I think he realized just how much it's like, I need, I need a race car. I need to be like up there doing something. And I, I think that's why he probably jumped on this. Maybe. That's my, my take. Honestly, one thing I thought was just cool to see when Mark Martin first walked up, like I honestly didn't really expect to see Mark for, for this, but when he walked up, I was at first I was thinking the way he started to word it, I was like, wow, is, is he about to say that him and Matt are both going to drive this car? But, but, uh, uh, not not that I wouldn't be opposed to it. Honestly, I, I kind of 
I realized I would be I was, okay with it, honestly. <laughs> I, I realized when I was uh, seeing Mark Martin up there, I was like, I kind of miss – I really do miss seeing Mark Martin more. And I realized, uh, you know, obviously he's not going to drive. But I was like, I wonder if Mark could ever do commentary for Fox because, I mean, I've said before, I think it's getting time for Daryl Walter to just be retired. And I was like, Mark Martin would probably be a good person for Fox, but that's just me. They'd, He'd be they'd a good need. personality. He'd be. He could replace Daryl Waltrip, you know, and, and personality wise. I mean, to make them all look the same, though, like they always tried to do, they'd need to put a like a, a one foot by one foot box underneath. Them. <laughs> yeah, <I knew. laughs> I remember when I was like, I think I was, let's say, two thousand nine. He was the first year in the five car, so I was twelve that year. I think I was like, I was like eleven or twelve, right? And I'm sitting there, like, and he stood up, and then he's, like, to hear on me when I was, like, 12. Mm-hmm. Same with AJ Allmendinger, but it's, like, nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, yeah, he's small. He's a small dude. But, all three of them, Kenza, Thrausch, and Mark Martin are all pretty small. <laughs> They're small dudes. Yeah. Like, I always thought the junior was, like, super tall compared to most of the drivers. And I saw he's six foot, and I'm, like, oh, oh, no, he's just surrounded by the Munchkin Village from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Michael Waltrip was like he's like six four. He's huge. Yeah, he's huge. When I met him, I was just like, "Hello up there." <laughs> but yeah, I I would be completely fine with Mark Martin being being in the booth. I, I like his personality. He's one, of, and the fact that nowadays he's so fiery on Twitter. Like, yeah, like I love amazing. seeing the selfie puts. It's hilarious. When, when NASCAR drivers don't have any corporate ties that keeps them in a car. They can they can have no filter. They just don't care at that point. Like That's I mean, a, I mean, Dell Jr. is kind of in a weird situation where he could still get funding because he's Dell Jr. No matter what he really says, I think he could fund uh, himself. Okay, I'm not gonna say entirely like that. He's got I mean, a contract with NBC though now, so he's got to kind of be yeah, careful. I mean, I mean, if Dell Jr. went out there and he just like spat out the N word or something like that, I don't think he, I don't think he could no. recover from that. But no, but, I don't think anyone but, could these days. But, but he could still have a little bit more freedom to do some stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, it's like, you know, what? oh, what are you going to do to me? You know, find me? Oh, wait, no, you can't. That's why. That's, that's, <laughs> like, that's why. Keeping it Go on topic it. of Matt Kenseth, I think, I think it's still funny when he won Phoenix and he poured, he, he, pour, he, he threw Coke at Joe Gibbs and he's like, he's like what, are, what is he going to do? Fire me? Yeah. That's, that's a good line. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was funny. I, I like, I like, I'm so epic eight. Uh, putting out some quotes in the comments. Michael Waltrip is the worst NASCAR driver ever. Clint Boyer. Classic. <laughs> and then he goes to drive yeah. for him in a few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember because like the, the press conference is like, so am I the worst driver ever or just in this era? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, uh... So I don't know. I don't got much else to talk about with Matt Kenseth. I'm just shocked. And so we, we didn't. I don't think we mentioned it. His first race will be Kansas, May 12th, and then he's going to run the All Star Race May 19th, which I am yes hilarious. I just think it's hilarious because I remember three weeks ago when they announced the All Star roster and format and everything, people were like, "Hey, Eric, look, Matt Kenseth is eligible for the All Star Race." So I'm like, "Well, yeah, because he won last year." But you guys know he's not racing. He's not going to be in the All. Like, who's going to give him a ride just for the All Star Race? And you know what? So to see this develop is just kind of. I'm looking back at all those comments. I replied to and everything and now i'm like oh my god he is gonna be in the all-star race whoa whoa what what i think what i think is most exciting about the fact that he's gonna be in the all-star race now is that he even though he's in the sixth car and it hasn't really been the the most uh the best performing car where they have went to this new uh yeah. set up where it's going to be the car is going to be more equal with restrictor plates and all these new he changes could, he could win it with that he's, drafting he's got a ch- he's got a chance i mean if this if this race ends up being anything close to like a super speedway race almost he could have a good, d- decent chance i gotta say there's the list you sent i think it was you who showed it to me to me danny or the list of all the races that trevor bain scheduled to run i've seen that in a couple places i don't think they've confirmed it yet but i gotta say I'm grumpy because they've given Trevor Bain all of Kansas' best tracks. He's going to he's going to be in the Bristol race. He's going to be in the Texas race. I guess other than Kansas, that's a good Kansas track. But you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm the grumpy. Daytona or Talladega races. Daytona is going to be Kansas, I think, according to that list. Uh, Talladega this week, uh, and and I think in the fall, I'm not sure about in the fall is going to be a pain. To be Trevor fair, Bain I, I think isn't I, a good plate racer. You don't think? What'd you say? Like, 
Trevor Bain, if you look other than that win, he's not a good play racer. He's like he Danica been, Patrick. He might have been good, good run defines the career. The Gen 5 car was easier to handle in the pack, especially with two-car tandems and stuff, so it could have just been that. He doesn't have a, quite a handle on the Gen 6. It's very well, different. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like Trevor Bain every other week. He just crashes, you know? And it's oh. like, oh, Guys, we here's our been, guest. We've been joined by a special guest here now. This is uh, Black Flags Matter. What's up, guys? How's it going? How's it going? going? Good, man. And uh, Darian is his real name, so we're going to call him by Darian. Uh, Darian, as far as I know, your channel, you haven't actually had a face reveal yet, have you? A what? What is that? Yeah. Like, like you haven't, like, as far as your videos go, I haven't really seen, like, uh, what you look like before yet. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah. Um, only a few people know what I look like. Um, like, um, I was in um, NASCAR Nixon's uh, Facebook group thing, and he really helped me out with my uh, starting out my YouTube channel and stuff. So, like, only those in that group know who I am. Well, until yeah, well, now. I didn't know that. Well, we're, yeah. we're happy to have you on here. Yeah, AB68, the urinating tree of NASCAR. Oh, uh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> I noticed that a few videos ago with the Clint Boyer video. I'm like, wow, this is like a urinating tree video. Yeah, even with the kamikaze being EDP. Yeah, I mean, he's sort of like the. I mean, he's sort of like my uh, inspiration for the channel and stuff. Like, I don't know. I saw his video styles and stuff, like the way he does his videos, and I was like, man, I got to do it. Like, I don't know, sort of similar to that, you know? Yeah. I, I got to know what your secret is because I think I looked it up. You started even just a little bit after I did as far as making videos goes, but yet you're doing way better than I am subscriber wise. So you're doing really good right now. Oh, really? How many subscribers? Yeah. I'm at 882 and you're close to 2000. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. Yeah, I started. Um, yeah, I started. Um, what was it? I think it was my freshman year of college. When I was going um, when I was going to school in Utah, I started the the channel out originally as like a NASCAR gaming channel and stuff. So I would do play games like NASCAR Thunder, two thousand three, two thousand four, and stuff. And then when school started, I pretty much was buried in schoolwork and stuff. So I kind of had to put the channel on hold and stuff. Then it wasn't until right around um, Christmas and stuff when um, my mom she got me uh, this mic and um, this little uh, camcorder thing. Uh, then I asked my little brother cause he knows how to like edit videos and stuff. And I asked him to get me, uh, if he could download uh final cut pro for me. And cause I had, I had no idea how to like edit videos and stuff until he started like teaching me it and stuff. So, so yeah, I'm still pretty like new at it. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's fast. Goodness. It's been, so you're saying about four or five months ago is when, when you really started yeah, getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, December 30th wow. was my first upload. So so yeah, well, that's so you're, you're you're literally in like the same ballpark as me. I think I started right at the end of December too. Which yeah. you did you did say that you had uh, some stuff prior, so that kind of helped you build a little bit early on. Yeah, I think I only had like how many subscribers did I have? I think I only had like fifty at the time before oh, I started, well. before I took a break. So so yeah, I was like I I I felt like doing something different though. So I was like I should try it. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're kind of doing the same thing that myself and even these three have really been trying to do your my goal with my youtube channel is to present nascar in a, a way to make it seem fun for people in our millennial Absolutely. age group mm -hmm. um it, that's, that's a big problem is that not enough people really want to give nascar a chance in our younger group they think it's just some some weird yeah. some weird you know, thing yeah you know um and you know it, it's my story is pretty interesting and stuff so being part african-american and living all the way out in um i'm from uh, north las vegas so i literally live like like the, the racetracks literally like a freeway away so i always go i've been going to the racetrack since first grade so since 2004 i remember so so yeah like growing up and stuff like literally all my like my black friends are they always make fun of me all the time they're like dude like bro like why do you watch like like why do you watch nascar and stuff like like we'd be talking about sports all the time and stuff and i'll bring up something about what happened in a, a recent race and they're like <laughs> stuff. like we don't watch that stuff i'm like yeah no. well when, when i saw that you'd said your first year watching like full like the full season was 2004 or that you're a junior fan i'm like you lucky bastard it's like you got six wins in the championship run i i started watching the next year i got one luck win and eight wrecks oh so 2005 <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, 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 man. Two thousand four. That was a that was a great year for him. And then pretty much all of a sudden, just just downhill from there. You know, I I think it's even a thing. It doesn't even matter what your uh, what your 
what your area or race really is. I mean, it seems like that's becoming a big thing, no matter what, for like, this age group. Because, like, even where I'm from, I, I'm from uh, East Tennessee. And even then, when I was in high school, there's like so, there's like maybe only 10 NASCAR fans in my entire school, it felt like. Like, most people just would like make fun of me, really, because I've watched it. Matt, and, there was only one, like, only one other person that I knew that watched NASCAR. Like, I felt like I was like the only one out of those. And a big thing around here is even, even now that more people have more grown up, we have dirt track racing and mm -hmm. most people just rather go watch that than NASCAR. And it's just getting to a point where you have to remind people why NASCAR is such a fun sport. It is. I mean, it's just, it's totally different from any other sport, you know, in America and stuff. And I don't know. I think that's where, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Brian France has gone wrong with it. I think he's trying to turn it into, you know, he's trying to make it like football and basketball and stuff with this whole point system and this whole, you know, chase elimination thingy, you know, and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just, it was cool the way it was, you know, without a chase, just the guy with the most points at the end of the season just wins, wins the championship. It should be that simple. But I, I think if they, and someone asked me this question uh, earlier this week, someone was doing a report that uh, she asked me to answer some questions. She said, uh, Brian, Brian France is no longer the CEO of NASCAR. You're now in charge. What's the first, what's the first three things you would do? The first thing I said, and even though I'm, I'm kind of okay with the chase slash playoff format, mm -hmm. but I pay attention to comments. A lot of people hate it. And honestly, I would just get rid of it for a season just to see if that draws in more fans back to it. It will. I mean, nobody, I, I have asked uh, plenty of NASCAR fans when I'm at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway and stuff. And I plan on like interviewing some people up there when I go to the race in September and stuff and asking the fans a few questions because Brian France and them, they know, they, they say they know what the fans want and um, literally nobody asked for a chase or a playoff system ever. Like it was fine the way it was. And then I, I don't know, just, I know originally the, the, <laughs> there had been early talks of it in like the late nineties. Right. And really, I know. Yeah. There was like, there's like some rumors about it, you know, hmm. and guys like Dale Earnhardt or Jeff Burton, some of the, some of the guys who like fans now see as the older guys or, or legends or whatever, they basically were like, no, that's, that's dumb, you know? And then like, as it went on and with the safety stuff, they sort of put it all towards safety until, and they just basically needed a reason. Like they were like, they, they, they gave a reason like, for what the fans should for, should focus on while they did that. And then Matt Kenz is being so dominant in 2003, basically gave him a good enough reason. Oh, yeah, we had like one win that season, right? Yep, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. I've been kind of quiet over here just because I'm so torn when it comes to the playoff system, the way it is or how it ever was created. Like, you, I, I think I said this on a stream once. You know, you could, you could go back to how it was 2003 and before, and I'd be perfectly happy with it. But to be honest, I don't hate the way it is now either. I'm like, it works. It's it's created some great moments, 2014, 2015. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm I'm sort of yeah. like between it, I guess, as well and stuff. It's like I don't completely yeah. hate it and stuff, but I would more so prefer just the old point system. Yeah, I think I'd, either would work. I just I've said this before. I don't know if you've heard me say it, but I hate the whole win and you're in for the regular season. I think that's ridiculous. So I wish I they'd mean, just change that. Change that and I'd be I mean, for example, Chris Buescher, when 2016, when he won, yeah. when he won, got that lucky win and stuff, then he's automatically in and stuff. I, I don't know. I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was a major flaw in this whole point system is that, you know, you can be, what is it? Top 35, top 30, something like that. 30. Top, yeah. 30. 30 yeah. Yeah. I, I, think, I wonder a, if, I, I wonder know. if maybe, no, nah, I, I wouldn't say I'm doing it, but I was about to say, I wonder if maybe rain wins shouldn't count for that, but maybe you still, you still get all the points from it. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. you can't go that far with it. I just, I don't know. Like, I, I think, yeah. I think the way it is, if if there's rules in place, you'll learn to adapt to it. If you want to, if you want to compete the sport, no matter what, no matter what it is, if there's a certain rule in place, you have to learn to adapt to it. Don't matter what it is, it could be racing, it could be football. You know, there's all kinds of rules in the NFL now and college yeah. football that you have to deal with. Um, and personally, they're about to relaunch the XFL. I'm wondering how that's going to go, if it's going to be any I different. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually really excited. As, as, especially if they bring a team back to Las Vegas for you, because I think there was one back in the original XFL. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. They were um, they were called the Las Vegas Outlaws. They had um, Rod Smart. He hate me. Basically the most notable player. <laughs> in the well, the thing, the thing with that, we're going to take a little break from NASCAR to talk about the XFL for a second here because it's on topic. But uh, uh, with them, they're, the thing that they've already planned to do is it's not going to be anywhere close to WWE. It's not going to be like that this time. I think that's going to be their their first. That's going to be their first step in the right direction this time. 
But yeah, that was their problem the first time. Yeah, that was their problem the first time they uh wait, what? Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, 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 I'm good. Um yeah, well that was their first problem really when they started out and stuff. You he, he wanted to combine really the, the two of them and stuff like you would see in the commercials and in the promos that they had um I believe they had like The Rock and the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin doing some um cameos in the league and stuff like that like I mean if you're gonna do a football league and stuff I think that's just the worst idea is to mix just WWE in with football and stuff just keep them separate just both of them separate and yep. he's in the right direction um deciding to do that now as far as teams go have they decided what teams are they have they haven't got that far they've just announced it's coming okay. back we'll probably hear more about that next year though yeah because I remember, um, I remember um, your, your name tree he uh, made a video about that and he said a good idea was to um, put teams where the NFL has sort of abandoned, like in abandoned NFL cities like San Diego, St. Louis. Um, what's another one? Like and so others. Or, or Orlando, Florida would be a great one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And like Salt Lake or San Antonio, something like that. But I, but like I read somewhere that he was trying to put a team, like he was trying to put a, a team in LA, and I, I don't know. I just didn't agree with that because I mean the NFL is already back there, so. I'm saying my thought was just make your mark in like cities that the NFL sort of kind of abandoned pretty much. Like, I mean, like I said, um, in, um, his live stream, I'm a big, uh, Rams fan, St. Louis slash LA. It'd be great to have a team in St. Louis. Cause that team, cause that city's very loyal. And, um, I don't know, they deserve better than what they got from the NFL and stuff. So, um, I think a team in St. Louis and San Diego, that'd be perfect. And honestly, Oops. Oh. oh, sorry. Uh, one, one thing that really helps the XFL this time around is like you look at last time, uh, even though it already is on top, the NFL was still, you know, growing exponentially at that point. NASCAR was about to have its big boom. Baseball was huge. Basketball was still going off the Michael Jordan uh, wave and, and the NHL was really big. Now you look nowadays, the NFL was stuck in in political quagmire after political quagmire and, and dumb stuff. NASCAR is just in the gutters. Uh, MLB sort of it, it slumps and goes up and down. The NBA is the only one really that's that's going up right now because the NHL is falling off. So they have an easier climate to get in. And if they can jump in, which I think NASCAR should go to is is streaming. I mean, they could get a, a jump on a lot of these big guys. Yeah, I mean, no one no one watches TV anymore, man. It's all it's all online. It's all internet. Oh. I mean, just, I mean, the, the only thing I watch on TV is The Walking Dead, and that's just one hour a week. Even that's not as good anymore. I just watch Atlanta, just the show on FX. That's pretty much all I watch. Everything else is just on like YouTube, um, yeah, Netflix. Really, I, I watch like streaming channels and YouTube. That's about it. I mean, I caught up on the entire season of Rick and Morty just off of one YouTube live stream. Like they just streamed all the episodes of the first two seasons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I just pretty- sat there watching it. And it's like, this is awesome. You know, because I watched the first episode of the third season. And I'm like, I'm all cut up now, and yeah. I didn't even have to turn on a TV. I mean, you know, I can watch I mean, Avatar, Family Guy, Simpsons. It doesn't matter that because someone's always streaming it, and I think that's where NASCAR needs to jump in before these other guys get a foothold. I mean, look at us for example. Right now, we've got 45 people watching us. That's 45 people who have chosen to sit down and just watch us talk about NASCAR for a while. I mean, every everyone would rather watch something online these days. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think I a think, smart move for NASCAR, I've always thought, would was, would be to make uh, you know race view, make that free, and make it actually work the way it used to. Yeah, I've said that for years, man. Like, are you making pay so much for that? How much is this to get? I don't know. I haven't. I didn't buy it this year because it was uh-huh. bugging out on me last year. So I was like, not buying it this year. My guy was was retired, so I was like, I don't really need it this year. So um, uh, so but it was like 50, 60, 70 bucks a year, I think something like that. And I'm like, if they just made that, if they just bit the bullet and made that free. Like that would, I feel like that really is what made me love racing. It was getting to hear the details from like all my favorite drivers, get to see it so up close. Cause I don't know if you guys, any of you guys have ever had race view, but you know, you can literally follow your pass. driver. Yeah. yeah I, I, I had hot pass. I, I had that too. Yeah. And you could have that. You, you could just follow each driver so closely every lap. Doesn't matter if they're on TV or not. You could see everything. So I just think that'd be a smart move for them. 
I've said it before, and I'll say it a million times. I think that NASCAR should do what the WWE did and open up a network, kind of like their WWE network, and and do nine ninety nine a month. You can go back and watch all the previous races from the past. You can watch your practice, your qualifying, your races from, and not just from the three top series. Open up to do like the Whalen Modified Series races, the K and N Series races. You could do so much with that if you had your own service and and ultimately just have have a set commentary team. For each for each series and have them ready to go and pretty much you could just almost entirely drop tv coverage really oh yeah absolutely speaking of the commentators i swear i'm just getting tired of the same old guys and stuff i don't know i keep think i keep wondering um when are they going to bring in some new talent you know like how old I, is, how old is mike joy how old's dw like i, I was know. i was yeah. saying yeah. Early. at some point soon I yeah. was saying earlier, even though he's even though he is older, I'd love to see Mark Martin as a commentator. Oh yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, not a bad idea. I think they're going in the right direction having Junior in there and stuff. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't really. I don't know. Jun- I've never seen Junior really, you know, commentate any races before. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'm, ex- he, I'm he excited. Isn't there. it the he's X- done the Xfinity series? Is it this weekend? Right, they're doing the drivers only kind mm-hmm. of. Broadcast. Yeah. I'm yep. interested mm-hmm. to hear that because, like, Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, I'm not a huge, huge fan of them on the racetrack, but they are two of the best commentators anytime they're in the booth. They, like, they are good. So I almost want them to retire, like, tomorrow so that they can take the place of Daryl Waltrip and yeah. Jeff Burton and all them, you know. I'm, I'll, to be honest. I wish I could yeah. find Carl Edwards off that farm and, and get him in the booth because he, he's better than all of them, you know. Yeah, he was good. like I think Carl. I think Carl Edwards just wants to pretend he never was a race car driver at this point. <laughs> He's he just went off the grid, man. I haven't mm-hmm. heard from him in forever. Last time he was seen was that like at his farm or whatever, and his whole family's out there now. I was like, oh, you know, good for you, but it's like, man, we miss you. <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> I mean, every now and then he'd get like one of his crazy streaks or whatever, and flip Keselowski in the fence or something, but. Other than that, I I don't like I met him every year. Uh I tried like I go to Chicago and every year. And uh every year I tried to get autographs. It was him and Biffle were the two I always met. And Edwards was always so cool and would always talk to us and stuff. And like NASCAR needs drivers like that because nowadays they they do not stop as much. They don't talk to you as oh, much. You know, it, my gosh. it's bad. That reminds me of a funny story when I was at, all right, so let me tell you all this. Okay, so um, I'm in the Neon Garage at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and um, I'm getting everyone's autographs and stuff, and pretty much um, I go to, like, um, they were just wrapping up with uh, with practice, and I was over in, like, um, the area where, like, all the big teams were, Johnson, um, um, Johnson, Chase Elliott, all those guys, and so I'm wondering, like, where all the, you know, smaller teams were and stuff. So, like, Greg Galding, Cole Witt, all those other guys. So I find them. And um, so I see Cole Witt. He just pulled into his um, into his, uh, into his his garage. And um, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm looking at him. Like, I'm waiting for him to get to uh, get out of the car, trying to get his autograph and stuff. And then I also see, guess who's also there? Um, Corey LaJoy is there, too. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to get, a, you know, um, two autographs at the same time. So it's like, this is awesome. And so I'm sitting there waiting. Um, I guess they're going over, like, data or something like that. They were both standing next to each other. So Corey LaJoy um, turns his head for, like, a second, like, literally a second. And he looks directly at me. And I'm, like, literally, like, having my, like, my program and, like, my Sharpie pen in the hand. And then he just turns his head. And I'm just like. Really? <laughs> and I'm sitting there for 10 minutes because I really want this autograph and stuff, right? I want both their autographs. And they literally did not look at me for 10 straight minutes. They like they both looked at me and then they just turned their heads. I'm like, I'm the only one standing at the hall, <laughs> too. I'm like, are you serious? Like, you guys have no other, like, nobody else standing around here. Probably no one else knows who you are but me. And you guys don't want to sign my autograph. I'm like, oh. and like, my mom was standing there, too. And she was like, are they serious? I'm like, yeah, like, they're not doing yeah crazy. jeff gordon jeff gordon did that to me once when i was like i think 11 or so he just hid like because you know like i was it was like after qualifying and they at i want to say it was the i think it was the goo goo dolls were playing at, at that time then they were having a concert out there so everyone was going out right mm-hmm. and like jeff gordon's uh getting into his thing and he's on the side that and he'd have to stop and he like he looks over sees me and then goes up into the front seat in the middle of the two people 
and like just looks the other way, acting like I'm not there or something. Like, Come on, man. And it's like, I've been sitting here for 30 minutes waiting, you know, at because I'd, I'd wait at practice. There's like a few spots at Chicago land where you're just like, you know, drivers go through here. I'm like, ah, screw you, whatever. I, you know, I, I ended up getting like 12 or so because they got stuck in traffic. So I was like, oh, hey, Brian Vickers, you want to sign this? <laughs> yeah, whatever, kid. <laughs> were the that's were the drivers like uh, you, you mentioned like you you were going through the garage area and then Lejoy Galding were kind yeah. of standoffish. Were like the bigger drivers were they more accommodating or like? Yeah, they were. Like Johnson was cool about. It. I mean, like he was like signing everyone's autographs and stuff. And then I went over to well, he's not really a big driver, but I went over to uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt's pit road, like you know, into his uh, garage stall and stuff. And he was there. He signed my uh, he signed his um, I have his rookie car. A diecast car um his 32 uh, ford and he signed that and um also his uh his team owner was there too Derek cope because he owns um mm. what's his, what's the team's name again starcom something like that yeah i think yeah. so like i and i um noticed him and stuff and i waved at him and stuff and held my program up and he came over and signed it so i mean that's that's why those guys are bigger that's why those guys got more sponsors <laughs> that's yeah. why cole Witt and them i have no sponsors yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, why don't you ask Danny about Greg Galding? <laughs> his, oh gosh. Uh, th okay, the thing of me and Greg Galding is that uh, when he when I first heard of him, he was in the number twenty K and N series Krispy Kreme car, making a pretty good progress. I thought, and I was like, okay, look, this kid here, he's got a nice Krispy Kreme sponsorship, moving his way up to the NASCAR ladder. Then all of a sudden, oh, oh hey, he's getting a chance to run the truck series. That's pretty cool. Got Krispy Kreme on the truck. Uh, wait a second, he's He's not run a full series, and all of a sudden he's in the Xfinity series now. He didn't. He didn't yeah. even do. Well, he didn't even do a lot of truck series races. Oh, oh, wait a second. He he's not doing a full season in this. Wait, he's a he's cup. A he's, a, he's a cup series driver. <laughs> what? I I think the problem with him is that he was pushed way too hard, way too fast, and it has ultimately made him into a big flop. And he's he. Only, oh, I mean, he's only twenty years old though. So I mean, it's. I mean, 20? it's not like. Or, yeah, how old is he? How old? Is he? I think he's like twenty-one, right? I'll look it up because oh. he's something like he, that. Yeah. Either either way, I think he was as as fast as he was pushed. He's already stopped his career before it could even get going. Yeah, he's yeah. only twenty. Oh, Born yeah, nineteen ninety-eight. I still have just he's a tiny bit of faith that maybe maybe like a big Xfinity team will maybe offer him a ride or something like that. Because ever since he's been in the NASCAR, he hasn't had like a real big, you know, like I think the biggest ride he had was. Man, it was with the – what was the team's name? I, I don't remember. I, th I think if, if he wants to save anything of me, he needs to get away from BK Racing because that team is just yeah. going to – that team is going to ultimately, like, ruin him. Like, they, they got into so much oh, really legal – legal they got into so much legal trouble last year that they had a verbal dispute, yeah. the, own, the owner and Gray, and he still goes back to him. I don't get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like – Oh yeah, in the neon garage when I was getting his autograph and stuff, like um before he saw me and stuff, he looked like I don't know, he looked really miserable and stuff just to be there and stuff. Because first of all, they don't even have like a I guess he was just like having his arms crossed and stuff, and he was just like I don't know, he just seemed like he was just interested in stuff because there was only like two people in the in their whole stall, and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is really sad. So I'm like, I gotta go up to him and just so, you know, so that he knows that I know who he is and stuff. And I was like, and you know what? Another sad part about it was he wasn't even in the program either. So I was like, hey, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like so the ultimate slap of, in the face. No, no, this was kind of a dick move, but I didn't realize this at the time. I was like, hey, sorry, man, you're not in the program. Can you sign the program? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, I, and then, as I'm walking away, I'm kind of thinking, "Damn, that was a dick move. That was a real dick move to say." Yeah, wow. that's funny. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that makes that'll make you well, happy, right? It, now. It, it, it can't be any worse than me because I went to Bass Pro Shops in Bristol, Tennessee, and there I am. I've got a piece of Austin Dillon's car, kind of like what's back here at the Trevor Bain thing. Mm -hmm. I got a piece of Austin Dillon's car from last year. I've got a, tr I've got an Austin Dillon die cast. I've got an Austin Dillon hat waiting to see him to get a sign. Here comes Ty Dillon walking up to me and I'm, and I'm like, Hey Ty, I don't have anything of you, unfortunately, but can we get a picture? <laughs> yeah, wow. uh, but uh, I mean, I, I didn't even get to actually see Austin. I got a friend of mine who does like a, um, He's like head of marketing with Bristol Motor Speedway. He did me a favor and got some stuff signed for me. But but other than that, I was like, it's like, dang, I feel really bad because I do like Ty. I really yeah. do. But uh, I I don't 
I don't, he's kind of in a weird situation. I don't see him getting a win in the team he's in. I think he's going to have to. He's going to. He's going to have to get his grandpa to open up another car for him. I think, but that's just that's just my opinion. I thought he was going to replace um Paul Menard's ride and stuff, but then that's I realized. That, but, but, I, but I mean, I, I realized that um that Menard. I mean, the only reason he was really there and stuff was because you know his dad owns Menards and stuff, pretty much. So it's like <laughs> the team's going to. I haven't shown. I haven't shown. I haven't shown him my shirt. I haven't oh, shown sure. anyone on the stream yet. My, oh, my shirt. I'm selling a shirt now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, it? Well, it, it, it's it's a Palminard shirt. Uh, let me oh. let me take like five minutes to find it, and then okay. Danny okay. Can, well, can put me on the. <laughs> well, sp speaking of speaking of Menards, I've got something pretty cool here to tell you. Uh, it, it was announced today. Not only was it announced stuff about uh, Matt Kenseth and all that, mm. Ryan Blaney has come up with his car for Darlington this year. I'm going to try to get this on here if I can. Kind of kind of barely oh, coming in there. Yep, that is oh, uh, nice. that, that, that's throwing it back to his uh Jasper's car from like 2003, yeah. I think. That car is badass. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Yep, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. Yeah, that that one might win throwback of the year. At least it's got an early lead. I don't know. I'm still leaning more towards uh, Kurt Busch's. Oh yeah, Kurt, I like Kurt Busch's nostalgia, but if we're going after pure look, uh, I like well, I, don't, yeah, I like Blaney. Yeah. All right, are you uh, are you able to put it on me? Can I? I don't know how to share screen. That's the problem. But I'm keep going, I'm, oh I'm, no, okay. I've got it locked on. Share screen. See if you can do anything. All right. Because God. Okay, I think I got it. Tell me if. Okay, is it on? No. Okay, no. one second. Let me press this. Okay, now is it on? Oh, goodness. Yeah. All right. Here, Here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice, man. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm just going to shamelessly plug this right now. If you want that $21.99 on Teespring, oh, I'll leave a cool. link. You're about, to, you're about to sell at least five of those. <laughs> <laughs> you should sell 49 or however many people are watching. Right. <laughs> I uh, I actually I like I sent the link to like my grandpa and my mom and 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 my uncle and my mom's like you might get in trouble with those lawyers I'm like it, it's Teespring like like Dale Earnhardt's image is on there if Teresa hasn't got her money grubbing hands on it then no yeah. one will <laughs> <laughs> yet well it's been on there about a year or so so hmm. <laughs> Teresa just scours the end looking for oh no I got I gotta get money from this don't even get me started on her i swear <laughs> we actually went for about god what was it like um i want to say a half hour just ripping on Teresa earnhardt one week yeah you'll, you'll quickly learn at these live streams they go all over the place no i'm already learning that now i like it <laughs> hey, uh, hey, i'm gonna Darren, stop sharing now Darren, uh it looks like uh we've all kind of got some kind of racing shirt on except jared what's what's your shirt i, I noticed you got oh, some kind of hey, shirt i rep bubba man Heck yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got to represent. Well, sure. I mean, dude, I mean, it just this, I mean, it means a lot for the sport right now, especially being at part African-American that, uh, um, I mean, because growing up, like the only African-American driver I really watched was Bill Lester and he didn't even race in the cup series. He was a truck series regular and stuff. So I always thought, man, we got to get, you know, um, someone of color and sometime. Thing, you know. thing with Bill, his attitude was a little bit poor, I think too. Who's? Oh, I got his car right here. Yeah, Bill Bill Estrus. I remember reading something how uh he he blamed his lack of success more on racial things holding him back. Oh, I think. No way. I know yeah, I I saw like some CNN segment or something like that about that. He was on CNN and he was talking about like I don't know, like the uh, um some I don't I don't think that was what held him back. I think I think he he tried his best but ultimately he just he wasn't that yeah. good enough. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, and he was a Bill Davis too. I have his car right here, and I, yeah. I realized I'm like, wait, it's a it's a Bill Davis car. Yeah, I mean, he was with Bill Davis in the early 2000s. That's when Bill Davis just started going downhill, like around 2003 ish. Even in the uh, truck series, I'm that, like, mm -hmm. that 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 team had so much potential, but it went no, nah. no. Nah. But I mean, at least Bubba, you know, he has a chance. At least, you know, but I mean, when I first heard when he was joining uh, Richard Petty Motorsports, I was kind of skeptical because I'm like, oh, crap, because I looked at Eric Amarola's success and what only one win in six years with the team and what, like one chase appearance. Yeah. But I mean, he's been I mean, he's been doing like better than I expected. I didn't. I, he, he, he got the late laps at Bristol. 
Yeah, yeah, man. And then the second place he, finish in the 500. I did not well, expect that at all for him to have that good of a speed week. And he took the lead at Bristol. It wasn't, you know, like a lot of these guys will lead because they stayed out, but it's like, no, he like went up yeah. there. And I think Keselowski, and, he passed, yeah, right? He passed one of the best drivers at Bristol. Kyle Busch and Keselowski, right? Yeah, Keselowski. yeah, I was in the car yeah. listening on the radio, like, come on, go, start yeah, raining, watching, damn it. Yeah, I was watching before I had to go um, to my journalism class, and I was like, oh, man, he's going to win, and I'm going to miss it. So I, I better record this. But I was able to watch the rest before class started, and uh, – Man, that it, that finish was just disappointing. That last finish with him, I mean, he felt he didn't even get a top fifteen finish. He only finished sixteenth. I'm like, yeah, it was yeah. Yeah. down too. I, set up. I don't really know how how, how how did they do it, Richmond? I never really heard much from him. Oh, he what, it was like twenty third, twenty fourth, four laps down, something like that. Yeah. Speaking, was speaking of Richmond, we've been so distracted from all the Matt Kenseth stuff and all that. We haven't really got to talk much about Richmond. What did y'all think about that? Good race, man. That is that was the best Richmond race I've seen since 2014. Well, I'll say it started off kind of like racing was pretty good, but nothing really much happened. Like there, yeah. there wasn't really, there wasn't really a crash until like right towards the end. Yeah, the first two segments there weren't any cautions except for the end of segment cautions, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they had a caution until like lap 350 almost, like 400. I mean, th- th- this race got done so quick that when it got over with, I just drove 15 minutes over to my local short track, uh, local dirt track, just went in. They stopped making you pay admission. I just walked in, grabbed a seat, and watched the rest of the races that night. Oh, nice. See, I didn't even get to watch it because I was at work, so I the whole time was listening on the radio. And it sounded like there were a lot of, like, and maybe, I, you know, it was just from where I heard it, but it sounded like there was a lot of comers and goers. Like, there we got, oh, yeah. like, a good 20-lap car. and Eric Amarola looked really strong at first. I really thought oh, yeah, Amarola was going to win. Yeah, yeah, it seemed I like the Stewart. Yeah, you saw like a lot of the veterans. I thought it was interesting. You know, the race starts in the day and ends up at night. I noticed that the, during the day, it felt like a lot of the young drivers or a lot of the yeah younger drivers looked good. But as the race kind of changed, as the track changed, we saw the veterans. I think at one point, the top young driver was like Chase and like ninth or tenth. You know, William Byron started good. And made it. I, I don't know. I don't know what he was doing exactly different, but just for whatever reason, on those last few race starts, Chase Elliott looked. Really good. I think if he had had one more restart, maybe he could have had a better chance. But. I think it was called having the inside line on one or two of those late restarts. That helped pretty much yeah. anyone who was on the inside. I know Byron got screwed on the out. Was on the outside on a couple of those. He was like on the top of like five wide or something on one of those. Like it was just a mess. And, yeah, you know. turning his stuff around though. I mean, the beginning of the year, I was kind of skeptical. Like, oh um, yeah, one of those like learning years for him and stuff. But he's in, he's in the last chase spot right now or playoff spot now that that they call it that but yeah i mean currently 16th i mean they've turned it around so far yeah no i and, uh, couldn't my, be more excited <laughs> and jimmy boy, johnson's uh, still out right he's outside of the of the playoffs still right i'm gonna yeah. so I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look up the points while while we keep going about it my, yeah. my, my boy alex bowman let me down he's been probably the best hendrick car in terms of short track racing this year but he mm-hmm. just didn't do much at this one yeah, he finished twentieth. Yeah, he was just in the back all day. Robert. I was just disappointed. I was disappointed with Eric Jones. I, I he started the race in seventh, and literally eighty laps nope. in, he was thirtieth. Yeah, Jimmy. I I expected Eric Jones to get at least one win so far this year. I like I thought Atlanta would be the perfect place for him to win at, or Bristol, you know, because now he's driving the twenty car, you know, for Joe Gibbs now. So I figured, you know, okay, rookie coming off a of rookie of the year season, I expected him just to come, you know, start being really competitive right off the bat, but. I don't know. It's just he's doing all right, but uh, yeah, he's uh, he's been okay. But like like I, I yeah, he was a little disappointed at Bristol. He had an okay car, had a tire issue, that's why he didn't finish well. Richmond, he ended up like thirteenth, I think, which I was way better than he ran all race. You know, he's been just inconsistent. But I, yeah, I don't know. I, I he almost won Texas, or he had a top five run at Texas. I was excited by that, but no, yeah, Eric Jones. Yeah. I was hoping he'd look a little better. Like right now, he looks about slightly better than he did in the seventy seven last year. I was hoping he'd have taken a. Sl- He'd take a slightly bigger jump figured, right now. Since he did, you know, all right in that ride. And, you know, he I figured, you know, since he joined Joe Gibbs and stuff, he would just start to take off. But I don't know what's up with these young drivers right now, man. Like, no one's really, like, standing out at the moment. And that's know? that's that's the problem. Everyone's been yeah. hyping up all season. And none and of them. The, yeah, NASCAR's whole marketing team and stuff. I guess that marketing um, decision kind of backfired. It's like, hey, let's go hype up these drivers, even though that, uh, who's well who's won uh, like only ryan blaney so far like he only has one win and kyle larson um 
he had his breakout year last year, but other than that, uh, Chase Elliott's going on three years with no win. You know, you got Jones Suarez not doing much. Bubba's had flashes, but not the, really the finishes. You know, it's kind of yeah. like, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Hey, I'm do you guys? Bubba is kind of sort of a, a pass this year, just for the oh, ride yeah. right now and stuff. And it's, I mean, it's like, season, so yeah, like Bubba, like uh, like Ty Dillon. You know, even Bain and Stenhouse. You can't really like. I don't expect them to finish better than 15th any given weekend, honestly. So I, I said it a couple weeks back. I think this weekend going into Talladega, I haven't yet decided on who I'm picking, but I think that as long as Chase Elliott can just be patient, don't get into a big wreck, I think, this, I, think I think this could be the one for him this weekend. Yeah, if he doesn't choke like he did at Daytona. I mean, he had a good card in the 500, and then he just took and, his top off. And, and I, I was at the Talladega race last – last year in the spring and honestly he, he looked like he could have won that one but uh the thing of aj almaniger and uh, chase flipped aj flipped everybody flipped hey uh i, I got the point i got the points right here if you guys want me to read it oh, off really oh, yeah. Well. yeah where's johnson at uh 15th oh see yeah where's, so, uh, where's austin dylan right now because he's uh you know he's got that win austin Dillon. well okay well i I have the chase grid up here but if if we're just going off strictly points johnson would be 16th and dylan would be 15th so okay. i'll okay. just read it off really quick so kyle bush and kevin harvick have three wins but because kyle bush has been amazing this year he's first and then three drivers with one win are boyer truex uh and dylan and then the guys that are in for points, Logano, Keslowski, Hamlin, Blaney, Kurt Busch, the top 10. 11th is Larson. 12th is Almirola. 13th, Jones. Bowman, 14th. Johnson, 15th. Byron, 16th. The guys that are outside of it. Um, I'll just go through 30th really quick since those are the eligible ones. Uh, 17th is Newman. 18th, Menard. 19th, Stenhouse. 20th, Elliott. 21st, Suarez. Bubba, 22nd. AJ Allmendinger, 23rd. 24th, Jay McMurray. Chris Buescher, 25th. Bain, 26th, but that's going to change soon. Yeah. McDowell, 27th. Reagan, 28th. Ty Dillon, 29th. And D Burrito is 30th. Um, Jamie McMurray is 24th. Oh, yeah. God, Jamie, what happened? Yeah. Jamie, Hello. Jamie qualifies very well usually, but he can never put it together throughout the whole race. I think we've seen Ganassi just take a, a – they've taken a step backwards this year, and I think it's because of, they haven't adjusted to the Camaro. They've adjusted to it about as well as Hendrick, and we look at how oh. Hendrick's doing. You got – Larson, you said, was 11th. I mean, think yeah. about last year. Larson was a top three title contender all regular season. And they're, 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 they have the same engines as Hendrick. They, the, all their engines come out of the same shot. Speaking, so. of, speaking of Ganassi, what the heck was going on with McMurray and Larson when McMurray tried to wreck Larson? I guess they were racing for the lucky dog, and I guess he didn't like the way he was being raced. I, I don't know. The, the, thing, the thing is, McMurray got wrecked by Kurt Busch. Larson never yeah. did anything. Yeah, my mom were watching it, and we were like, well, what? what the hell? <laughs> like, I don't know what happened there, but... I mean, because Kurt Busch, like, wrecked him, right? Yeah. yeah. Wrecked him. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know why McMurray was mad at Larson. It felt think, like there was miscommunication that, in there somewhere. I yeah. think that's one, one of the things in NASCAR that we're never going to really know what happened <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> It'll be the mystery of 2018. <laughs> I want them. I want to see those two fight. Imagine that'd be the most polite <laughs> fight you've ever seen. And be, well, you, you have to have all the cameras pointing down too. I, like I, the shortest guys. I what are I they? Like I don't know. Like Lar Larson. Larson's, <laughs> Larson's, a dirt, Larson's a dirt track boy. He's probably been into a few fights in the past. Yeah, yeah but he's five seven. He yeah, looks yeah. like a little squirrel. <laughs> short. Oh my! God. I I've never seen a driver that short before. And Ryan <laughs> he's really short too. Like I've got his autograph too. I was like, like y'all don't remember Rico Abreu? Oh, yeah. <laughs> come on i've seen i've seen plenty shorter than than uh larson <laughs> what what's rico doing these days i think he's still he's still trying to race some dirt track racing i i've seen him in dirt track stuff he's he's ran into truck series before hasn't he yeah, yeah. For like a year he right. actually when i was in michigan they had the truck race at texas and we were listening on the radio but he was like third and going for the win and then he hit the wall and I didn't hear anything. I actually have not heard anything about him since. It's like maybe, he just hit the maybe, wall and everything went away. Maybe he can find a maybe he can find a ride for Eldora. That'd be. I love Eldora. Yeah. Like that. That's my like. That is the one truck race. Oh, that and Talladega mm -hmm. that I won't miss. Like I'll never miss those two races. 
bring the Xfinity series to Eldora, and that will be the best race. To and I've said it before. The trucks are the only thing that really work. They've got the big, heavy rear ends, big, long rear ends. It'll just works better to throw it around a dirt track. The other cars just wouldn't work. Oh, yeah. Uh, it works work if you go slow enough. <laughs> Damn. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize. I realized McMurray finished 12th last year. I thought he did so much better. His best finish in points was 11th in 2004. Oh, yeah. He made it in the playoffs just by mm -hmm. being there. Well, he he even looked good last year. I mean, granted, Ganassi had a bit of a resurgence, but I didn't realize he fell off that bad. And then so did uh, Larson those last few weeks. Like It's I'm like so his engine department just uh, gave uh, up. We're, we're all dogging on McMurray. He's probably going to win Talladega this week, and you know that. Uh, <laughs> I'd be happy if he does. I like McMurray. Well, I don't know. With the chase, the playoff format the way it is, he don't deserve to have a playoff spot right now. So, What if Trevor hey. Zane wins? That's going to be kind of a weird, uh, awkward situation. I heard someone ask a question. I think it was in the press conference today with Roush. If that, what, what, what they would do if that happens? Would they like start a third team so Bain could keep going? And they were like, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, God. Roush having a third team. Oh, I think they. I think they said they said that you know, they said that that would, that would, that would be that would be it'd be nice to have that problem. You know, is what they said. But I'm like, I don't know what they do. I know somebody put on like a comment section. I could tell it was a new fan too. Like I could tell it was someone who joined the last two or three years. But someone's like, what if Roush like gets a third team in the coming year or so? And someone's like, I don't know if they can handle that many cars. I'm like, okay, it's either two. It's like it's like. <laughs> Well, it's like it's either you're trolling or you didn't know anything about the mid two thousands at all. Like, <laughs> like the modern Roush. Like, has like, like, did you see two thousand nine? They had they put they put that rule in place, and I call it the Jack Roush rule for a reason. Where they well, I mean, two thousand five, all all five of their guys made the chase yeah. that year. Yeah. 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 Now look at them. I never. I that is probably the one team I didn't expect to just completely fall off the face of the earth like they're just yeah. they they have a long road back but they haven't I, they haven't fell off entirely they're hanging by a string right now yeah yeah but i mean just compared to what they were in the early 2000s and the 90s i'm seeing really spin house as your best and and greatest uh yeah, full-time guy left you got a problem yeah I, I i caught how you really said his name right there i'm seeing parallels scary parallels between Roush and Hendrick Motorsports. You look at both Roush and Hendrick Motorsports in the mid 2000s up till, you know, just a couple of years ago, they had four to five cars that were all playoff contenders, all potentially championship contenders. You had Roush, Kenseth, Edwards leave within the next three years. They had all their veterans are gone. They're just led by a bunch of young drivers and they haven't gone anywhere. You look at Hendrick Motorsports. Now, Jeff Gordon's left. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is left. Jimmy Johnson's about to leave. And they're going to be left with Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, William Byron, and I don't know, Tyler Reddick or somebody. That team, unless Chase Elliott or Byron, one of them turns into like a real star, which they they could be as bad as, as Roush in two or three I think, years. I think out of all those guys, William Byron has the most potential. I think I so really, too. I mean, Chase Elliott, I mean, he did finish like, I think he finished like in the top five in the points last year. He was in the tender, like the. Uh, he's, he's, he's finished in the round of eight the past two years. Yeah, but it, the problem is he just doesn't win. Like, like come on, when are you going to just just win one race? Just one race this no. year. Like, well, I, I, I still win. say I, I get, I give Chase Elliott a pass because the driver I compare him most to, and I think are going to be a big. Like pretty big rivalry in the next few years is going to be him and Kyle Larson being competitive. It took Kyle Larson until Michigan his third year to get his first win too. So yeah, but Kyle yeah. Larson's driving for Chip Ganassi. You yeah. got Chase Elliott driving for Rick Hendrick. I just think I think I agree. I think William Byron, whoops, has the most potential. I think Chase Elliott's the best right now. But I think if you ask me again in five years, who's being who's more successful? I, I feel like it could be Byron. But I also feel like Byron could completely tank, and we would never, we'll never hear from him again. I don't know what to expect from him. So on on the stream I did Monday night, I was saying how uh, I don't think Bain, and we were talking about earlier how he wasn't the, uh, and this is a little off topic, but how Bain wasn't the uh, biggest bust ever, and I, I kept forgetting the guy's name from the, the 80s and 90s who was the biggest bust, Rob Moroso. That's his name. I don't, I don't know. If I'm he, actually planning to do a video about him. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah, I'm actually making it. Um, I was um, I started making it last night and stuff. Um, the main problem I have with him was that he pretty much killed a person drunk driving. Yeah. And and also, um, I don't know if you guys um, knew this or not, but he was previously arrested 
on four different occasions for DUIs. And he was still allowed to race. I didn't know if you guys knew that. I, I haven't he even heard of this guy. Time, man. It, it, he was like this, like, like, um, you see Father all these guys. Owned, um, what, what was it? Some, uh, racing parts company, something like that. And yeah. Yeah. He, and, uh, but he was like being hailed as like he's gonna be the he's gonna be like the next Richard Petty kind of deal. Like people like he was hyped through the roof. And then once he got to Cup, I have it. I have his stats pulled up here. He was only twenty one, which for back then, that's, that's like yeah, how Joey yeah. Logano. Like, like back then, guys didn't get Cup rides until what, like twenty seven, like twenty six. I mean, I know J Junior started when he was like twenty five or twenty six, and he was considered like a young gun when he jumped in. You yeah, know, like. Yeah. Like it wasn't until probably, I think Kyle Busch really, really set off the trend of getting guys really mm -hmm. young when they came in. Shit. But here, Moroso in in 1990, his only season trying full time, he missed four races, got one top ten, led nine laps, and finished thirtieth in points. Yeah, like, like 11 DNFs, I think too. Yeah, he yep. just packed all year long. No, he was racing. No, he he was racing at the finish of ten of those 25 races. Oh. Ugh. Oh my god. And he, he had three lead lap finishes. But it's like you look at his Xfinity stats, he had he had six wins, you know, and, and in two years. He won a championship, I think in like eighty was it eighty nine. Yeah, eighty nine. Yeah. yeah, and then he moved up into the cup series the next year. I think one of the problems with him was that this was a new cup series team as well. It was it was his, um it was owned by his father and it was our first year in the cup series. So I guess that makes sense in a sense, you know, because you know they're just learning and stuff. But um uh, I also am convinced that he was probably dealing with some demons off the racetrack too. If yeah. I mean because if you're gonna have four DUIs, I think it was either three or four different DUIs and stuff it, within like, I think it was within a two or three year span. And that's a problem. I still don't even know why he was allowed to race. Like he should have been like, I mean, imagine, I, if, imagine if someone did that today, like you would be gone. You would be gone. Like after just one, that was I right mean, before it, the CBS stuff, CBS really started getting involved. So I think back then it was such a different culture. And I mean, sport. You, you look at even Tony Stewart and his situation where I don't like, I, I put more blame on the, driver who jumped out in front of him more than I do Tony in that situation. Absolutely. But even then you look at that whole situation, he had to take practically the rest of the year off just because of that. He was never the same again. Yeah. No. So no, oh, and then uh I, I see some people in the chat. I, I'm gonna say that okay, yeah, Nick Sant he, he corrected. Yeah, Kenseth was twenty eight when he jumped in. Stewart was twenty seven. And like back then the, like I yeah. like you go back and watch those broadcasts. It's like, look at these young guys out there. You oh, ever like, seen a cast so young? And it's like they're pushing thirty. Like, yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Junior was in the young, and Kenseth were in the young guns until like two thousand seven. And it's like, you know, Kyle Busch is like twenty years old, right? And yeah. Denny Hamlin's pretty young too, but okay. But yeah, and then uh, Kev or AB sixty eight puts black fire suit, black lights, and dark track everything. Yeah, like. That Kevin Ward, well, Kevin Ward was high at that time too. So, like, was so. he was he high when he was racing, or did they just yep. like was he smoking? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he was high they, when he was racing. They tested him like positive for it. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to get into this topic because I don't know. My opinion is relatively unpopular on this topic. I, I don't think I don't Stewart know. should have revved up yeah. like like it's Stewart isn't innocent yeah. by any means. I mean, I put I put I put blame at least fifty fifty. I don't know. I, I don't know how you can let Stewart off scot free. No. I think well, you, there's. I mean, he ran over him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I agree. I know. I just yeah. I've stayed. I've always stayed away from this topic because I never want. It's hard to blame one person, you know. And it's, yeah. I don't know. Well, I, and, and I, I do kind of think uh, the family of Ward maybe handled it a little, like. They're they're still trying to just basically get Tony Stewart's money is what I'm thinking. Didn't they they um they reached a settlement I think was it a yeah but I think I think they tried to, I think there was some other news a few months ago that they were just trying something with Stewart again. That's like listen you know it, it's it's a tragic but it's like how Maybe are they gonna move on? Death I I don't know it just doesn't sound well, it doesn't sound good. Well and I think they have other kids too so like how are they gonna help them move on if you keep putting this back in the public and you know the more and more you do this and the more and more people see like that it wasn't you know it, like granite stewart trying to rev up and trying to put mud on him like it's stupid on his part and it, 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 it the hot head in him bit him bad yeah. but at the same time i mean he he went down there 
And it's like, yeah, Tyler Johnson puts it right. The way I see it too is nowadays is uh, Kamikaze said this is that they're using their dead son for money. And that's, what's kind of sad about it. Like that's what's yeah. the saddest part about it. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a messed up situation. Well, how about we get away from that topic? Yeah. That's the, yeah. That's the, <laughs> so how about we, uh, let's talk about what's on my t-shirt here. That's where we're going to this weekend. I Tal- love the color gray so much. Yes. Talladega. Ta- Talladega Super Speedway. It's by far me. I, I almost kind of like Talladega more than I like Daytona. Oh, I, I definitely oh, yeah. like it yeah. better. As a, as a spectacle, yes. As an actual facility, I grant I've not seen a race at Talladega, but Daytona is nice as hell. Oh, yeah. Days. Okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I went to Talladega back in the spring of last year. The facility, uh, even though I've never been to Daytona, I can tell that Daytona definitely is a better facility. But as far as the track goes, and this goes from not only watching it, but doing it on games and simulations. I think Talladega is a better design track. It's a little bit wider, in my opinion, on the in the track it allows, itself. Yeah. It allows for four wide. You can run a clean four wide there. Yeah. 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 I've seen guys go five. I think 2008, they were talking, uh, they were showing like the pack go by and they were going like five or six wide. You know, it's like. Yeah. Like when, when I'm, when I'm driving a car on iRacing or NASCAR hate two in Daytona, I'm so scared the whole time, especially if I get in the middle, I'm like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I'm way too close here. But if I go to Talladega and I'm in the middle, I'm like, okay, yeah, I've got a little bit more room to work here. Well, and Talladega or not Talladega, Daytona is much, I think much easier for the leader to stay out front because you have so much like you, you, you have so much less room you have to block and it's so much quicker. And with, with the newer pavement that really, really hasn't aged that much compared to Talladega. Whereas Talladega I've noticed has become more of a handling track. Like I noticed that it was during 13 cause it, it was Kenza that actually that made me notice it. So this handling went away right at the end of the race in 2013. He went from like leading the most laps or being one of like the two or three guys to lead to falling back to like 20th when uh, Dylan flipped. And it's like, so that's, I, I always liked that about old Talladega before they repaved it is that you had to do, you had to master draft, have good luck, but you also had to have a good handling car. And I think that they're getting back to that. So I, that's, I like Talladega so much better. I'm just really excited after seeing the Daytona 500 air package. Some people didn't like it. I don't oh, know why yeah. so many people didn't like it. I liked it. I didn't see what the prob- what the big deal was. I Me mean, either. I mean, you had racks. I mean, it, it was like lap 20, and guys were just, you know, racing so aggressive and stuff. And then and then I'm expecting to go on YouTube and see, like, you know, um, um, reviews like, you know, oh, it was a – it was a great Daytona 500. And then I click on Kamikaze's channel and it's like, <laughs> what the shit? What the hell? I'm like, his wasn't the only one. There's plenty like that. Even look, Tag Nation. David Land. In Tag Nation in oh, the yeah. comments here doesn't like it. You know, I, I just say it. I made, I made a video the night of like, wow, this is a great race. And I had, I had more than normal hate comments saying like, how could you like this? This was a mess. Yeah, David Land, he, uh, he put one out there like basically how they need to get rid of plate racing, which I'll go off really quick is that Getting rid of the plates would be the dumbest decision in NASCAR history. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't the Rusty, cars go like 230? I don't know. They would they'd go, go 230 on their own. Rusty Wallace, I think, yeah. went 230 at Talladega. Now, that's not even adding in. They used to draft before the plates. Like, people don't remember that. Yeah. They Like, they're probably going to – like, those cars – giving you know that, that the, the tires allow it and that the drivers don't pass out from all the force in the corners, like – those cars would go probably 250 or 260 in, yeah. in a tight draft. So me, I, I that think, is not an option. I think super, super speedway racing is fine. I think four races a year is plenty. I think that's enough. That's perfect. I think, I think that's perfect amount. Yeah. Um, but, and this is where people might not agree. I think, I don't think Talladega should be in the playoffs. I think that it offers too much risk to the, Playoff it, playoffs itself, I think should focus more on the driving ability there in the playoffs, and I think that I would move the Talladega race to before the playoffs. I have to ask, like, where would you move it? Because if you move it out of the chase, then it's at the, the at, yeah, it's well, it's at the latest is September is September tenth this year. Yeah, I, or I, 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 I would I would honestly put it, um, actually. Because if it's in August, it's hot as hell in Alabama in August. I, I, I would I would actually put it right before the playoffs start. That's me. 
Yeah, may, may put it where Indianapolis is going to be this year. Last race to uh, make the playoffs. Uh, yeah, craziness. That, 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 that's, that's, I would rather it be one that makes or breaks you making it into the playoffs rather than one that makes or breaks you not even having a chance no more. Well, and uh, I really quick on Indy, I don't know if how true it is, but there's been like in the rumor mill that's been spinning around is that if the Roval works this year, that 2019 or 2020, they might try the uh, the road course at Indy. We're totally. I, 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 honestly, I think other than the shit they have now. Honestly, yeah. I think I think we just need to get NASCAR away from Indy. Honestly, that that's what I think too. I think that too. But I like Rusty's comment in the chat. What do you say? He says they do they do two Poconos in a month. They can do two Degas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for, that's oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, Darian. If Rusty Walrus, he we had him on once. That, that he's a cool dude. He's mm. a cool dude. And or or uh, Owly one two three infinite degas and Tag Nation. I'll watch it again. Maybe I just saw it wrong, but it just a lot of people keep saying they get rid of of plate racing. I, think, I, think, like I almost he, took it as he wants us to like stop going to Daytona and Talladega. So you, that, that's okay. not an option either because no, of history. I'll, I'll say know. I'll say it like this. I'd like I'd love to say Talladega. Just go ahead and put lights there, and then we could run a night race there too. See, leaving well and leave. Leaving Daytona would be what for NASCAR would be like leaving Indy for IndyCar. Like you just can't yeah. do that. Like no, I, leaving I, Indy I, for NASCAR is fine. Hey, I, 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 no I, I, I never, I never said leave Daytona. I just said put lights at Talladega. No, no, I'm just saying like with with like I, I how Eric would was saying. that. Yeah, I mean that, that's obviously not ever going to be an option. I don't think. I don't. No. I think most people would say don't do that or keep it. Keep Daytona to some extent. You know? right. Yeah. Ta- Taz Taylor says bring back Milwaukee Mile. I'd be fine with that because I live like 90 miles away, and then I could have some of my friends that are in college up there go to races there. with me. There is serious talk from what I've been hearing for 2021 when they get a chance to re- redo the contracts and everything of seriously bringing in a, a few more short tracks. Milwaukee would be a great one. They need one, to. They need to build a few more I, short tracks. I, yeah. see, I could see Gateway getting a date, honestly. Um, <laughs> they got to make sure it's not too close together because that will kill the yeah. attendance. Right. There has been talk, though, that Nashville Fairground Speedway, if they can get a few more improvements to that track – they could potentially get maybe maybe not a Cup Series date, but maybe a lower series. But maybe they get a Cup Series date. I don't know. But there's serious talk that Nashville, uh, with Nashville being a huge growing area, it could offer a good potential to bring NASCAR back there. What was um, the reason why they left anyways? Was it financial reasons? With this, well, 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 I'm not talking about Nashville Super Speedway. That's different. This is Nashville Fairgrounds. Oh, Speedway. oh, oh, yeah, okay, okay. But Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway is still in business where – where uh, Nashville Super Speedway was owned by the same people that own Dover, they basically just stopped really caring about it. Honestly, hmm. I know there's but, been rumors of them coming to bring a road course race to Austin in 2021. So we'll see if that happens. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Circuit of the Americas, mm-hmm. right? They yeah. they do that track. Like it, it's so it's it's very, like really new. It's so up to date. Mm-hmm. They need that to bring that track on. And I think it, with the way it's it's designed. It's like half the track is like Watkins Glen, and then the other half the track is like Sonoma. It like really it's just, is, yeah. and it's the oh. best parts too. Yeah, no, you're, oh, you're, I you're, would, and it seats like over one hundred fifty thousand, so you got plenty of plenty yeah. of space for people. I'm all for I'm all for just demolishing Las Vegas Motor Speedway and just build a short track. I'm all for that. <laughs> I mean, Vegas is just, just oh, this is, yeah. I if they destroyed Texas and just paved the little dirt track out there and let the cars go, cars run around I mean, a little quarter that mile. Makes, that makes sense. I mean, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, they just took out, I think, half of their grandstands. Like when I was there, because I guess they're building like these new, like the, what they call suites. But I mean, we all know that, I mean, they can't sell out the track anymore. So they got to take out more seats or they, they have to find some excuse to do it. So I'm like, why, I, I, my thought was, why not just build a short track out there and you can still fit like 70,000 people? Speaking of that, if, if if we don't fill up Bristol in the fall, I could see them having to take out some seats over there because what I, I think I, I think it was more because of the weather. Oh, I thought they did. But, I thought they already took out some seats. Well, actually, they kind of did. They put a few banners up that kind of takes away a few seats. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I think if uh, if they don't get a better crowd there in the fall, I think it's time to consider if they should start tearing down a little bit because that was. Probably that was the worst crowd I've ever seen over there. I was there on Sunday. I didn't get to go back on Monday. Oh, we we, we lost Iceberg there. Yeah. Uh, 
but he'll Good. probably come back. Oh, there, there, he is. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Hey, yeah. Um, my my email signed me out and signed me out of everything. Hey, so our special to, like, guest is here. Welcome, the ice. Yeah. Hey. Just catching so, the tail end. Good job. So, so if you're not familiar with this guy, his I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, uh, I think jumping, I think you jumping, I think you're jumping the gun a little on Bristol. I mean, I don't know. They need to, if they're, I think, I think weather had more than anything to do with it. It was in the thirties, snowing almost they raining. Need, they oh. need the spring race date for that because it's been weather delayed for how many years now? Like what? Yeah. Five years in a row? Something like that? Something pretty much. Yeah. I think I 16 know. was the only year it there, wasn't. And the attendance that year was awful. There's, there's been at least one race every year for a while that's had rain there in some capacity last like yeah. last last year it was uh the cup series spring race and then the wednesday night truck race uh, rain delayed it a lot um and then this year it was the spring cup series race again like something's got to give something got to change something up with that Just put a roof <laughs> yeah <but also, laughs> make it like that track they, in japan hmm? i, I I know, I know I'm just talking about, but there, there's, I, I, a, there's a track in Japan where there's a dome, and then right on the top they have like <laughs> they have this like open thing with some stuff over it that lets all the exhaust and everything out. Oh, and yeah, then I uh, don't think of that, but hmm. I they would, but it's still kind of funny have it have it be a, the last Coliseum turned hey, into the if, first racing dome. If, if if they can build Colossus TV there, I think anything's possible. So hey, they they keep talking about remodeling the Astrodome here in Houston, turn it into a racetrack. <laughs> well, you know, Soldier Field actually. Uh, I, I live ninety miles from Chicago, but Soldier Field actually held a cup race. Yeah, in I think nineteen fifty. Yeah, yeah nineteen fifty. But still, I mean, technically Disney Chicago. World. Disney World used to run truck races. Yeah, they uh, they tore that track down. Yeah. Rusty Waller has asked me, Danny, how's the crowd at Bristol for football? Well, I mean, they've only had two football games there. They sold first, out, haven't they? they the sold. Fir first one was Tennessee Vols versus Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. um, that one was the best crowd I'd ever seen there. I was happy to be there. But then literally the next week they did East Tennessee State University versus uh, some kind of team from North Carolina – and they couldn't even really fill out one section of it. So I mean, it just depends yeah. on who. It, it depends yeah. on who they're going to get to play there. Now, there's there's rumors that they want to do another football game over there. Um, they haven't yet specified if it's going to be Tennessee Vols or or anyone. I think if they did another college football game, they should pick another team and have them play Tennessee since they're the defending winners of the Battle of Bristol. And just kind of just kind of keep doing it like that. But I say make it uh, one of those neutral games. Like, I, yeah. Notre Dame I, I, versus Michigan have that game be at Bristol because that's a rivalry that and I'd be that's, on that's, TV that's, at the that's, time. That's way too far. Though. Yeah. They, they, they got to get well, team it's that, basically possible. Uh, it's not that far. I mean, Indiana not, and, and Michigan. Okay, I, there. I don't think that would be enough to draw in uh, a big enough Tennessee crowd. Game. I mean, it's in Bristol. I, it's so you gotta have Tennessee. At, at, at least play in that game, and um, I think it's more the TV, the TV part of it, because NBC has uh, would be they could probably cover uh, Bristol one week, and then probably have a game the next. They could they could switch it on different networks too, because wasn't the Battle of Bristol on like ABC? Yeah, it was, it, it was it was the top game for that night. I mean, it was, well, it, and was then, and then, it was a major deal. They had College Game Day. They had everything there. Yeah, I remember. I remember because uh, they had Junior and if they're driving. There. But I mean, I'm just saying, like, switch it up with each network because NBC. I don't know why, and like, and I root for Notre Dame. I have no idea why NBC covers Notre Dame, like, because not to to Rating. really rip on them too much, but oh, it's just they're not that good. Like, I, I Notre say Dame isn't that good. If they're going to do another college football game, definitely bring back Tennessee, being defending winners, and have them play. Honestly, go to the third Saturday in October. And do Alabama. Alabama's a big enough team; they could they could draw in all the way up to Bristol, yeah, and that, that that that's that's a big enough rivalry. Even though Tennessee barely wins that rivalry ever anymore, but that's still a big enough rivalry that that could fill up Bristol. So, do you guys uh, we, do we want to get back to Talladega? Yeah, <laughs> talking about football. No, dang uh, it! I, I want to talk about <laughs> Tennessee balls. No, I want to talk about the Minnesota Vikings. I thought we would uh, go ahead and we should maybe go around and just go ahead and give our picks and why. Who, what, who are you picking? I, I can go first if you want. Yeah, uh, you go first. first. I don't Dale, know. Dale Jr. Oh, wait, he's not racing anymore. <laughs> I'm going. Jeffrey. I'm going. Jeffrey, anything is possible. 
the the crazy person yeah. me wants to pick Trevor Bain for this weekend, but I'm not that crazy. I'm 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 not. It's not that late enough in the evening. I'm not that sleep deprived to go with Trevor Bain, even though I want to. I'm gonna go with the easy pick. I'm going with Brad Keselowski. He's got like five career wins here. He wins here a lot, especially when he needs to. Penske hasn't won yet this year. I think he needs a win. I think he's gonna win. I'm gonna go. I talked about Chase Elliott, but I'm not gonna go with him. Um, I'm gonna go with somebody who's who in the only super speedway race we've seen him in this year, he proved to be pretty good. He's in a car definitely capable of it. He sat on the pole at Daytona. I'm going to go with Alex Bowman. He's in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s equipment. They have all of Dale Jr.'s notes for super speedway racing. He ran pretty good at Daytona up until that wreck took him out towards the end. I mean, he was up pretty much in the top five pretty much all day, it really seemed like. I think uh, Alex Bowman could get it done this weekend. Wouldn't it be funny if Dale Jr. actually like burned all of his super speedway notes? He's like, nobody should can ever know what I knew. Keeps that close to his to his chest. No. Good so uh, oh, all right. So I want to. I have I have a magazine here, so that's sort of cheating with stats. But I just want to bring it up to uh, Danny. Guess who is number four in active drivers' average finish at Talladega? Huh. Just just guess, Danny. Bowman? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Oh. Is it is it Bowman? Nope. Oh. Gray fucking Galding. No <laughs> way. How? How? Four, four, Fourteen point five average finish. He got a top ten last year at Talladega. <laughs> he did? Yep. If, oh my god. If Gray Galding <laughs> wins this weekend, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> oh, I'm almost you wouldn't even for qualify him. for the chase, would you? <laughs> Thirty, no, right? Go for back, you wouldn't. But I'm not going to. I, 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 I think you have to maintain a certain position in points to to still keep your eligibility. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to pick Greg Golding. Okay. Um, <laughs> that because I, I'm still sane. I'm going to go with the only guy who finished top five in both Talladega races last year, and he's been pretty good with his new team this year. And I'm going to go with Eric Almirola. Oh, that's that's a solid pick. He finished, he finished fourth in May, and he finished fifth in October, and he led a lot of a lot of laps. And could have won the 500 this year. Well, and the Fords are fast at at the plate tracks, and now that he's with the top right. Ford team, and you know it's not Danica Patrick in that car. It, that the 10 car will be a force. Yep. All right, so I'm totally surprised that you guys didn't pick this guy. I mean, he won one of the dual races at Daytona, and he pretty much led the most of the race, I think, in the 500. Ryan Blaney is going to get his second career win this week. I could say it. I, I mean, say I at least picked a Penske guy. <laughs> I mean, like you just said, the Fords, I mean, I, I don't know. They just picked it up um, at the play tracks. I mean, we saw it at Daytona. I mean, I'm interesting that none con- of us. None of us picked a Toyota driver, which I, I talked about that on my show today. How I actually think this is this week, like Toyota is probably going to be the worst of the three manufacturers. Yeah. If there's any type of track where Toyota struggles more than the others, it's probably Speedways these days. Well, they only had I, one I, guy I, I in the top five uh, last year. I think it's so. Sorry. Uh, they, had, they had one guy in the top five last year, uh, Bush in May. Or, or, in, or uh, yeah, and he was third. That's I, it. Think it's, I think it's so funny when I look back to speed to speed weeks when they first started. The first like little bit of like what we saw, it looked like Toyota was so fast when they first got there, and then that quickly changed. <laughs> mm-hmm. But okay, so we've all made our picks. Now I want to talk about dark horses because this is definitely the track for mm-hmm. dark horses. Oh yeah, we did this the Daytona uh, too. We and, did the dark and, horse pick, our pick, and underdog. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do. Really, I think this is a track where it's fair enough to have three, honestly, and. Uh, mm-hmm. Three, three, three dark horses and one underdog. Um, my three dark horses are going to be Bubba Wallace, Eric Almirola, and David Reagan. Because David Reagan uh, is, the, even though it's front row motorsports, that team still seems to somehow be good when it comes to the, the scripture play tracks. Yeah, they won. They, they've won there before, and an underdog. Daniel Suarez, even though uh, he hasn't really made like too big of a too big of an impact on Super Speedways, he has done really like he's been he's been there in the past. Last year, it was looking like he could possibly win that fall race. Um, mm-hmm. He he could possibly he, uh, he's he's going to be my underdog for this one. Picking three dark horses is difficult. I, I think I Bubba Wallace is, is a good one. Bubba Wallace okay. is a good pick. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go and go with Trevor Bain. I think he's gonna be angry. 
<laughs> and I think that might be that might be more trouble for everybody else just because Trevor Bain has Trevor Nothing Bain. Nothing to lose. Sketchy. Trevor, Trevor Bain just by himself is a little sketchy. Now, if he's angry too or is he really determined, gosh, could be a yeah, might could be trouble too. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go and then I'm going to throw out I'm gonna throw out an interesting name. And I'm not really sure why. I'm going to throw Chris Busher's name out there. And I'm trying to figure out how I can back that up because I don't think I really can. One of the times he was at Talladega, he was flipping over. So, I don't know. I'm going to go. I, maybe he should be my underdog pick, guy who just kind of comes out of nowhere. I'll go with my other dark horse. This is a more obvious one. Uh, I'll go with Stenhouse. I, I don't know if he counts as a dark horse because he won at Talladega last year, but he's 19th in points. I'm going to count as a dark horse. All right. So, so, I got my three dark horses, and some of them have already been said, but Daniel Suarez, I still think after what I saw him in the fall Daytona race or the, the summer Daytona race last year, uh, it, I, I, it's just got something. Like, I, I can't explain it, but I feel like once he gets his shit together, like he'll be one of the top plate guys. Uh, Bubba Wallace, for reasons already said. And then I'm going to say this guy because he's in Hendrick Power. We talked about him a little bit earlier. Uh, Kyle Larson. I know he's not great at Talladega by any means, but it's Talladega. You know, you know while, while you do need a lot of talent at the plate tracks, you also need a little bit of luck, and I think he can get that. And then my underdog, I'll go with Trevor Bain, just because I've been bashing him so much the past three weeks that it, it just seems fitting that he'd prove me wrong. So I'll go with him. Okay, so since we're picking um, dark horses and stuff, of course, first one I got to pick is Bubba. That would be really, I think that would be a really cool story for the sport. Him, um, first African American getting his first win, and also it's his home track too. He's yeah. from. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. and not, not to say this in a weird way, but yeah, right. I, I, I think an African American driver winning at the Alabama track would say a lot for the sport especially if he especially if he's like cheered and welcomed there because alabama's right. had a history of racism in the past absolutely. big time so i mean if, if if he won there i think that'd be a good image for the sport honestly oh, yeah absolutely that would be national headlines oh yeah that would make espn for sure espn mm -hmm. finally give a damn about nascar again. like gobble that up <laughs> and then okay so then the second one second driver i'm gonna pick um, he was leading for a moment in the final laps of the uh, Daytona race um, in the July race before he wrecked out. Um, Ty Dillon, I think, might come out. You know, he might come out. He might show something. Um, yeah. And then um, the, my last guy, I was sort of um, debating this in my head, but I got to uh, go with uh, David Reagan. I mean, proven winner there. He's won in the, for uh, that team before. Um, it was back in 2013, though, so a while ago. But um, I don't know. Just said re restrictor plate tracks just seem to be his thing, man. He's just always up there. Was it 2013 or 2014? 2013. 13. It was 13 because, yeah. I'm the not... Davids beat the Goliath. I actually was watching that race earlier this week. Yeah, that was a, that was a good finish. Yeah, because yeah. didn't, uh, didn't David Gillen get second, too? Yep. Yeah, yeah. That was even the, that was the, that was the best part about the whole thing, too. One, two finish. Not just oh. – Tyler Johnson, if Ty Dillon wins, imagine Kamikaze Games' reaction. I want Ty <laughs> Dillon to win now. Thing. That would be so cool. That would be the funniest video ever. Granted, I looked a little into it, and I put it in our chat um, about a week or two ago, um, that while while Kamikaze is uh, guilty of and saying some very nasty shit, uh, Ty Dillon kept it going for like a month. Oh, he did. You know? So like I can't say he's innocent by any means, but it's like I I, I just want to see that reaction, and especially since Kamikaze, from what it's sounding like, he's doing a GoFundMe so yeah, they can go to Chicago Land. Well, I'm gonna be Chicago Land, so like, and I'm gonna have a camera by then, so I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm just gonna follow from a safe distance. <laughs> All right. Well, that I mean, would be he did invite, like he said, you should come out to a race and stuff. So when he first tweeted that, I. I figured that he, you know, he was gonna like invite Kamikaze to like um, a race of his choice, maybe. But then he's, but then I was um, looking more into it, and he was like, I guess he's like not even gonna like, you know, pay for it or anything like that. Which and the, made no sense to me. It's like if you're gonna invite someone, like I guess you would like try and bring them out there, wouldn't and you? And the bad, the bad thing about it is, is like how Kamikaze went on about how he's like a rich spoon-fed person and stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, and while I, I do think to a partial degree, he did get there because of just of his name, but at the same time, like, you know, he has shown a lot of talent, but like he did, that doesn't help your case in any way. I'll just go to a race. It's like, like Kamikaze said, it's like his family doesn't have a lot of money. It's like, you know, like, like the race that I saw junior win at in 2012, I had to pay for my tickets and my mom's tickets, yeah. you know, like I, I had to pay, I had to save, like, we didn't know where we were going. So it's like, we couldn't just drop. 300 bucks right off that. So all the money I had saved for a few years, it's like, I'll use that. You know, it's like NAS NASCAR fans more than any other fan base in professional sports relies most on those people who make less than 50,000 a year, the blue whether it's younger people or, or blue collar. Yeah. And, and I, that's the thing. I think that's why these, whether it's right or wrong, a lot of the older fans don't like these younger guys is because there is no connection whatsoever anymore to that blue collar base. And that and Ty Dillon saying that, while I don't think he meant it that way, completely proved Kamikaze right, whether it's justified or not. And that's a, that's why I say like I can't blame Kamikaze as much. It's like I'm not the, his biggest fan by any means. Like I'd love to have him on just to pick his brain, but he he's not you know he's he's not completely wrong. And and Dillon pretty much you know proved it for him. I've still been saying this for a long time. I want to talk to the actual Kamikaze, whether it's on the stream or whether it's just like before the stream ever begins. I want to know if some of it's more an act that he does for views. I, I want to talk to him personally a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's part and part. I mean, like I, I'll, I'll be honest. He does it like right after races. I've yelled after races before, like 2015 Talladega. Being a Dale Jr. fan, I was hot. You know, yeah. I, I just wanted to yell on yeah, stuff. Some of his rants, though, he just, he just some hot. of them are out there. Yeah, the yeah. stuff he says about Boyer and Junior, it's like, listen, I, I get you don't like Junior fans because Junior fans can be very annoying. We're not all. I get oh, 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 trust me. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Junior fan, but there are some really weird yeah. ones out there. Hashtag yeah. not all, but it's like, look, just look at Vega anytime Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano, or Kyle Bush won. You know, it's like it's not a good look for us, you know. But at the, you know, but and I, but I just don't get the hate for Boyer. Like, yeah, I don't get it either. That's why I had to. I in the in the video I made about him about his uh, Martinsville win and how I said he had his um his Richmond curse. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but mm -hmm. that's why that's I put Kamikaze. Yeah, I mean that's why I put Kamikaze in the last part of my video and stuff. I was like, because I I don't know. I just don't understand it. Like I've met him um twice. Um, the first time I met him was in like 2009 and stuff. And he was just, he's like one of the nicest guys, man. Like, you yeah. know, he was, like I had, I, I had, um, a broken finger and stuff and I had like, um, a whole cast, like basically on, on my wrist and stuff. And he signed my cast for me and stuff. And he asked how I broke it and broke it and stuff. And, and, and we were just talking about, you know, his career and stuff. And I, I just don't get the hate. I mean, the guys, I mean, he's, he's a nice guy. Like granted he did, you know, basically cheat you know that one you know in that whole 2013 incident but other than that's that what, I mean, it's not really uh, i don't really see the hate for him well that's what nick sant says kamikaze hates boyer because of t richmond 2013 but i place that more on uh ty norris and michael waltrip they're yeah, the, like yeah i don't know why michael waltrip is still paraded around the sport like a, like a hero or like like the face of this sport i don't really understand that michael waltrip was not a great driver he's been done some shady things in recent years i don't know why he stopped well, he, he, he's just very enthusiastic like he's got a big personality i mean he was he was willing to go on dancing with the stars and you, they didn't you don't hear about kenny himself. wallace anymore and he had the same type of personality or with kenny wallace Center. Jimmy Spencer knows more about about NASCAR, in my opinion, than than Waltrip and, and Wallace when it comes to it. Ken, Kenny Wallace is actually still doing a little bit with the Xfinity series, like broadcasting. I think. Oh, I see him sometimes, but he's not Michael. He's not paraded out there the way Waltrip is. Well, we know why Jimmy Spencer was taken off is because he actually had an opinion. Yeah, you can't network sense that, sponsors. That's didn't that, like we've mentioned it on on here before, but that's one thing I hate about NASCAR's just TV coverage, like major media coverage is nobody is critical of any drivers. Nobody's critical mm -hmm. of anyone. Well, they're all friends. They want to keep That's their the problem. They they're, want all, to keep they're all friends. Because they know if they're going to say something, they're going to get fired well, for it. And, it's stupid. and they're all friends and they're all friends. Like that's like, that's the, pro like you don't see this problem in the NBA or like, um, mm -hmm. I know right. that in, in the NBA, there was this big thing, uh, with, with this dude, like this, this, Make sure this guy or this video got out that 
uh, the Jazz got Derrick Rose, I think, and he's like, he sucks. Yeah. And you just see Shaq and Charles Barkley losing it. And this, this is funny, you know, see, and there's one guy who did But make, it's like, you don't see that in NASCAR. Exactly. I was going to make that exact comparison. You look at the NBA with Inside the NBA with Shaq and Charles and all them. It's one of the most popular sports shows on TV You're because real. they just – they roast people, and it's hilarious. You, you know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. In the, what the guys in the chat that like Jimmy Spencer, I'm not confirming him by any means, but I will try my damnedest to get Jimmy Spencer on here one of these days. Because honestly, <laughs> like cool. I used to, I used to hate Jimmy Spencer uh, the same way I hated Kyle Petty. But it was because they said it how it was. You're like I hated Kyle Petty because he was always like anti Junior, anti Danica. But it's like he really was critiquing how it sucked. Like they like in yeah. 2010, 2011, they both sucked. And and Jimmy Spencer is kind of the same way with a lot of stuff. I know a lot of people got mad at him. I think in like 2002 or three, when he was like, "We need to move on from from talking about Dale Earnhardt every week." And it's like, yeah, that far away, it it, it might seem insensitive, but it's like in hindsight, he was right. Like the sport can't just mourn for 15 to 20 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you uh, wouldn't do this. This wasn't done for Adam Petty, you know. I know Dale Earnhardt meant more. more you know, and I thought, yeah, and yeah. and that I think that's the part of, that people all say we want more personalities, but when we get those personalities, we like rip their ass a new one. You know what I? You know what I really miss in terms of like NASCAR broadcasting was what they used to do on Speed Channel NASCAR Race Day presented by Home Depot. That was such yes. a that was such a good way to start. That was a good show. It really was, and yeah. I think I think it had a perfect panel of people on there. You did have Jimmy Spencer, you had Kenny Wallace, uh, you had Jeff Hammond. Uh, who else did you have on there? I can't remember. Yeah, who um, what was it? Jared was? Robert, John Roberts. Yeah, yeah John Roberts. Uh, and and then I think they had like a few others who did stuff here and there with them. Yeah, um, D. W. would come on every now and then back when he would be speaking coherently and. When when they venturing it a lot with them in, in terms of like like yeah, outside yeah. reporting, I mean that was a really Bernie good Sandler. program. Yeah, that was a really good program, and they just kept it real really the whole time. Kind, kind of like what we did, kind of like what we do here. Yes, trackside. Trackside has been reduced to such a weird thing. It still exists, but it's it's exclusively run by NASCAR, and they mm -hmm. it, it, it feels so weird if you go to it. It does not feel like an enjoyable yeah, watched, experience anymore. I watched some. I can't remember what track it was at, but I watched one of their episodes and I wasn't pleased. I was expecting like the old track side and stuff, but it was just this weird show. It it feels it feels weird now. It's it's not the same as it used to be. Well, and and uh, with track side, like it really was until about 2009 or so. Then they tried making it more of like a studio kind of show. Like it's a live audience. Meanwhile, it's pre-recorded. And then like also on top of that with NASCAR coverage after the races, you know, victory lane used to be a lot better. And then after that, after victory lane, they'd have an hour of Dave to say, I learned so much about open wheel racing and motocross and, and just all forms of motorsports because I would want to see what Dave to Spain had to say about nascar for 10 minutes at the end you know yeah. and it's like they don't there's not that there's well there's one there's not that demand but two there's just there's no one that really knowledgeable that's willing to put themselves out there and be that outspoken voice for all of motorsports like dave despain was you know i feel like i feel like this group of podcast people right now are one of the only ones who don't care to say the honest truth because we have no ties in nascar absolutely locked by jim mutter since 2015 okay. I think another problem with NASCAR media today and stuff, you got a bunch of yes men and women. I mean, they just like go. Someone and, just said that in the comments, actually. You got a, I mean, you just got a bunch of people who just like, I mean, they just pretty much uh, agree with everything and stuff. There's like no real opinions and stuff. And you can tell, like, I, I can tell that maybe a few of them, they want to, I mean, they, that a few actually don't agree with like, you know, everything that like NASCAR does and stuff. Yeah. But, but it's like, you you also have to keep your job too because I think we've seen some other media uh, former members of NASCAR media get fired for basically going against the grain and talking you know just not agreeing with everything that Brian France does and stuff. So that's I just want to see I just want to see a broadcaster NASCAR broadcaster be able to straight up say on the air, yeah he just he just makes a lot of dumb mistakes sometimes instead well, that, of yeah, instead that'd of, be great. But. The guy wipes the dude out, and instead of like, oh, he clearly overshot the cor corner, he needs to change that, he'll say, oh, well, that car has been a lot to handle lately. I mean, he looks like he just got a little I, loose there. I'm like, no, no he just wrecked the dude. Okay. 
Okay, so you know, you know how I always, you know, I the my new thing now is like uh, about the pit guns is pit gun communism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I was I started thinking about NASCAR, and NASCAR, like someone put, it's like North Korea. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far. They're not locking people up for disagreement, but Mm -hmm. NASCAR is like works as like a communist organization masquerading as a capitalist organization, like to to kind of get all like you know. not to get political or whatever, but just N- NASCAR, like everything, go- you you can tell everything now is is manufactured. It's like looking behind the scenes of a Disney movie, like like the new Star Wars. It's like you can tell all this stuff they were told what to say, mm-hmm. and it's just like that with NASCAR. Whereas like NFL and NBA, MLB, like I I started watching a lot more back in 2014, and being a Cubs fan, it's kept me interested. Um, but even their announcers, I, I used to think they were like NASCAR a lot. It's like, no, they're they're not really uh, – the, I mean, they'll be cr- uh, critical. Granted, they get in more trouble for it compared to like NFL and NBA. But I like I said, I, like Rowdy Smoke, I wouldn't say it's like the USSR, but I wouldn't also agree with uh, AB68 by saying that it isn't like a communist thing. It's like you, you can tell one guy basically runs this. He's just on one giant cocaine binge. And he never he never comes to the races either. That's a huge. I mean, that's a huge no. prop on its own too. I, I think Eric didn't you say it was at Texas or or, or Bristol he's, or one of them? He's been at Texas the last two times I've been there. But from what I hear, that's one of the few races he goes to on a regular basis. And but we were surprised if running a huge sports corporation such as NASCAR. I feel like you should come to every single race. I mean, what else are you like? But, what else? But, you know. but how's he going to spend that money if he's at the races? Hmm. Uh, you can you can find hookers in any uh, yeah. city. <laughs> I don't know if he has enough money for and that. Cocaine, you can you can find cocaine, hookers, and alcohol in every city in America, even the dry counties. It's like you know, I'll, but- I'll I'll say this right here, and this is for coming from me because I, I wanted to work in some capacity within NASCAR. I actually wanted to go work for a track or something. The problem is. There's no jobs out there, honestly, within the corporation of NASCAR, within the tracks, for the simple fact that I feel like they can't afford to pay too many people because they're having to pay so many people these these outlandish salaries. And in the end, it, it only there's only a few jobs that are really out there for people who want to get into it. And you've got to know somebody to really get into it. Oh no, NASCAR is not exactly a growing industry with a ton of job opportunities. I'm being completely honest. No, I mean, it's, yeah. You know what's kind of a sad thing about like NASCAR media is like nowadays, like these people in like sporting news or writing articles or whatever on Twitter, they're like, you know, the Dale Jr. download. It's so it's so like out there and kind of edgy compared to us. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's like, just like just what have they said that's like controversial? Any, it's just like any other like podcast or anything. Like I've listened yeah. to it. I'm, I mean, I'll I'll just say this like his his podcast. It's is- interesting. It's it's got nothing compared. It's got nothing compared to what we will be willing to say. No, yeah, it's they, nothing different. I mean, it's just he's just talking pretty much. I mean, it's like well, nothing edgy, nothing controversial is being said or anything. It's the problem of of having someone. To, you know, it's like when you look at the the retired people in the NFL that that go on. Like like even if they're not that good, like Brady Quinn, you know, or uh, you know, or like Tony Romo. They're, they have no ties whatsoever left to the NFL, so they can say whatever the hell they want. Whereas Jeff Gordon, he owns Jimmy John's car. Or Dale Jr., he still has a team in the Xfinity Series who needs sponsorship every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, like, like uh, Josie says, like, that Dale gives his opinion. Yeah, he gives his opinion. But can you tell me the last time Dale Jr. said something where it was like, oh, that's way outside the box? Like, he's, he's, he says stuff more than anyone else does comparably but it's like the stuff he says it's like it's not that big compared I'll, to say I'll other say, sports i'll say this about dell jr he learned in 2004 to keep his mouth toned a little bit because when he won talladega and looked like he would be the favorite to win a championship that year and it don't mean shit right now <laughs> yeah he uh he ruined himself by cussing when he won the race and it docked him so many points, he had no chance after that. Well, and then, uh, I mean, yeah. I would, I yeah. wouldn't, I, and I've, I've thought this, like, my dad will be like, you know, like, he's like, I, I would crash people, you know, I wouldn't be able to make it. You know why I don't think I'd be able to make it in NASCAR? 
I don't, I, I'm not good at keeping my damn mouth shut. I, I don't think if that, I don't know if any of you can like realize that or not, or if noticed. Oh, I've, I've realized. I, I can't, whether it's cussing or giving my opinion, I can't keep my damn mouth shut. I would be suspended like within the third week of the year. It's like, so Jarrett, you finished uh, 20 today. What happened? The car fucking sucked. Oh, Jarrett's <laughs> out for two weeks. <laughs> Bummer. That's the third time this year, and we're only three weeks in. Yeah, when was the last time a driver cussed in an interview or, like, gotten uh, fined for that? I, um, I, feel, I, I feel like somebody has cussed, like, this year. I know Tony Stewart, he cussed after he uh, he fought Joey Logano. He was, he was he yeah. something then. I know that Hamlin last year said shit, but it was on NBC. Yes. Sound. They have a different the broadcast one, so you don't get penalized if it's on a channel that no one gets. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I think For, yeah. <laughs> um, I know. Let's see, see new, that's new, that's new that's another happened. that's another reason I think that they should go to a online streaming service because they wouldn't be as regulated. They wouldn't have to like. There's been times where they accidentally caught someone dropping the f bomb on a radio because they couldn't <laughs> time it. They, they couldn't time it right. So you know, if they're on a streaming device, they don't have to be rated by then. See, that's like with the hot pass. My mom didn't realize it was like it was live. Like the, the, the five second delay, the five second delay was not on hot pass. And uh, and so like I, I'm watching. I think Texas, the first race that year that my mom was able to watch, other than the 500. You know that she was in the house for. And she was. She was like doing something out in the other room. I think she was like making something or for work or something. And uh, all of a sudden, Junior comes over the radio. Tony, the car fucking spinning out like fucking Michael McDowell. What did he say? <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. I'm pretty sure. No, you didn't hear it. You didn't hear it. And I'm like, you again. I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to lose this. I just got it. We paid all the money for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tyler Johnson, Jarrett L1 penalty, Doc 25 driver and owner points. Damn, that means a lot more these days. Uh, in a way, I'm kind of glad that my channel isn't that popular because I think YouTube would be getting on me so much for Jarrett's mouth right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they. I, I, you have to be a political channel for them to go after you with that. I don't know. I've had like, several videos demonetized. Really? Yeah, I have. For nothing. I mean, I've I've appealed them and they've all been overturned, but I've had to appeal them. Why? They but, have a bot. They, they have a bot. It's a bot. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a, yeah. it's a bot or something that just glitches up. So they'll. they'll they, they, I think one of the reasons I put hired. the word. I think I put the word controversial in either the description or title of that video. Like Kazowski makes controversial comments, and I think that probably like buzzed it in. Like, oh, gotta flag it. Yeah, because yeah, I know, like back they had like if in as your your tag you wouldn't and someone's like well what about nascar like is all their videos just demonetized now or uh, and they, they they've hired like i think a few hundred people now more than they had before to manually review it so they can do it quicker because i mean they have billions of hours of content like you know every every day or whatever it's like from around the world so it it's huge but it's like yeah they have to like manually review so much stuff now the fact that they actually overturn their demonetization is incredible speaking of this subject because this is the hour when it's getting to where we've kind of wrapped up our nascar discussion we kind of go different directions so speaking of, speaking of stuff like that um have you all heard about how like youtube has been not monet not monetizing these these uh big gun channels because of all the controversy yeah, about that now that. well They've actually been going to an unlikely site to put their content up. They've been going to Pornhub.com yep. to put their stuff. Now. I heard about that. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. because People upload. Actually, because... I looked up Avatar to watch an episode. I click on it and I'm like, oh, cool! They have a full episode. It's like Pornhub, and it's like, what? Wait, what? Wait a minute! It's like an entire episode of Avatar: Last Airbender is <laughs> on Pornhub. I'm like, interesting. No, like, this not, is interesting. Okay, I want to clarify. They're gonna, no, they're gonna clarify. think. They're going to think that I'm into anime porn when I'm really just wanting to watch my favorite show. I want to clarify, not that I've been going there. I've just been seeing the articles on Facebook, people. <laughs> yeah, uh, his but, his but, fiance but, watches the show, so he has to clarify. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm being serious. I know. That's I know, the only I know. I would have put about. But, but like, as, I know. Far, as far as I understand, they they do some kind of like monetization platform just like similar to YouTube does. They, they, they run advertisements to get paid. 
interesting yeah, more interesting advertisements i i'm i'm Pro- betting. probably probably, <laughs> not, probably i didn't get an find advertisement out. online I'm find out i'm not gonna find out <laughs> Yeah, I think this is about the point we start looking at the uh, at the chat. We da- we dare to uh, to look at the chat. Mm-hmm. Oh, everyone uh, who hasn't already that's jumped on, lick that like button. Yep, lick that like button oh, for sure. <laughs> hey, Danny, look in the chat real quick. Danny B, better not be on that side. <laughs> yeah, honey, I'm not on that side. Hey, can I we screen share? <laughs> yeah, screen share to prove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, just show us your history really quick. We we're interested. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to accidentally get him in trouble. And like when we meet up one of these days for like to go to a race or something, it's going to be like, yeah, you want to know what happened after the stream? Probably not. Dark Knight 534 asks, would you wear Goodyear shoes? <laughs> no, they blow out. <laughs> I blew a flip flop <laughs> once chasing after Robbie, <laughs> after Robbie Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was running in flip flops and I lost the entire rubber part of the sole on my shoe chasing after Robbie Gordon to get an autograph when I was like eight, and I was wow. like, I, "So, so I don't, I don't want Goodyear." Like I had like Nikes or whatever, and that happened. So Goodyear would probably blow up as soon as I put them on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tyler Johnson, just, Danny B, I, delete browser history. Yeah, I just <laughs> casually, I, I just casually texted my fiance that I love her. <laughs> I will yell at Jarrett after the show. <laughs> Tag na- da- the sound of silence. Tag Nation says, please DM David Land and get him on here. I'd love to have David Land on here sometime. Oh, yeah. I'd sure. love to do that. Who's David Land? <laughs> uh, David Land is definitely a more serious nascar youtuber I, I, know, I know who he is I, I, the joke is we get about the same amount of comments for him as we do for, for uh, Ro- uh, rowdy well, uh, rowdy good your shoes cost 199.99 what i'm googling this I, let's wait, see I, uh, I, thought, I thought that was a joke i didn't know that's is that a real thing no no okay, good. <laughs> What the, you know good your shoes no one could be sar- no one could be sarcastic with me i would catch it no, no, nope, nope. Goodyear's got some shoes. Goodyear footwear. What? what? That is some. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it's someone, some someone, sent, someone sent some to Tony Stewart. I'm sure he would love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh, they have a Goodyear racing collection. Holy. What? What they is this like on Goodyear.com? I no, want to see this. They sell <laughs> Goodyear racing shoes. Like, they legit. I assume for drivers, like this is, yeah, this is like their official Goodyear, one of their, you know, departments, hmm. the performance collection. Who is that? That's not Ryan Blaney, is it? No, I don't know who that is. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So no, they do exist. And no, I probably wouldn't wear them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I found them. 45 bucks on Amazon. The whole thing is made of rubber, it looks like. Like, it, they look like normal shoes, except... They look like they're completely made of rubber. Except they're not. That would, why did Goodyear not come up with Heelys? You know what I'm saying? Like that seems like that should have been obvious. <laughs> nah, they were they were too busy trying to bomb at the brickyard. I say we bring. I say we bring back Heelys. Let's all start wearing Heelys again. Oh hell no, dude! I'm a sneakerhead man. <laughs> I don't wear that crap. <laughs> no, no Heelys. <laughs> Let's throw it back to 2008 Crocs. I had Crocs. I used to wear Crocs a lot. Not like in really in public, but just around my like neighborhood. I wear Crocs all the damn time. I never hey, wore uh, Nick, in my life. Nick Sant says he's buying those shoes now. No, save your money and buy my shirt. <laughs> yeah, the Paul Menard money. <laughs> Everyone likes to see Paul Menard be so expressive. How much is that shirt? Uh, 22 bucks. Oh, that's too much. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Why not yeah. 21 tease, bucks? Tease, for Paul Menard. Well, it's twenty one ninety nine actually. Oh, okay. Uh, You're skirting the edge there. <laughs> so uh, Janza says a podcast with What If David Land and Kamikaze would be fun to watch. I think, I think we, we need to divide do- that all up. We can't. I mean, if we're going to talk from a business standpoint, this that smart move is to spread those out and take advantage of spread it, spread it out <laughs> different and then audiences have them all together on a bye week. <laughs> Just have one <laughs> have, week. Have where- the bye week, but. 
have one week where the show just boots up, starts, Danny plays his music, but then when the screens come up, we're not even here. It's just the three of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, and us, it's empty rooms. Yep. That, that's, li- that's literally what we, what we could do. We could just walk away and say, surprise, they're here. It's like, it'll be like that scene in Dark Knight where it's the two guys, they break the uh, the pool stick in half and go, all right, here you go. One that lives gets to be on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you say? He's like, make it quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we come back and you just see like three red screens. We didn't see who won either. Somebody said Matt Kenseth could qualify for the playoffs like Kyle Busch in 2015. Uh, no, he couldn't. I, 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 he, he couldn't. I think it's it's a different situation. And in and, and this case, even then Kyle Busch had to win like five races, I think, before they would actually let him do it. So. Yeah, well, he had to be in the top 30. And Well, and the thing with Kyle Busch is that before the season, he had declared as a full-time driver, whereas Matt Kenseth didn't. Yeah. yeah, Kenseth will not be in the chase this year. The playoffs. I, I, he's lucky to be in the All Star race. <laughs> he'll be. He'll be the ultimate spoiler. Mm. But hey, if he can go out and win the All Star race, he's then qualified for ten more seasons. Yep, he'll, he'll never not be in the All Star race. They'll rename that the Matt Kenseth race. That'll yep. be his legacy. <laughs> okay, I gotta ask, how know, did Danica manage to get in at the last few years? Was it just fan yeah. vote? Fan vote. Fan vote. Uh, I thought they also gave it to Daytona Pole win, or that might have been the Sprint Unlimited or the Clash, whatever it's called. Never. I, I thought it was the most bent sheet metal. At one point, they like added some really like just specific categories just to get like Junior in there, just to get yeah. Danica in there. I thought the only way you could get in was if you were a former All Star winner, and if you won, I think I was last season. I think you're right. I think I might have been thinking of the Clash. So yeah. I think you're right. The All Star race is more. Yeah. Fun. I I think you have to, if I'm not mistaken, you have. You have to have uh, won the All Star race within the last ten years. That's how Jamie McMurray stays in because he won it like twenty thirteen randomly. Um, then there is you have to have won a race either this current year or the year before, which is how Kansas was qualified. And then I think you have to have had uh, made it into the playoffs. I don't think they do poll awards or anything. I think that's reserved for no. the unlimited. NASCAR remixes brings up an an excellent point. Uh, uh, that in the six team the owners championship. Now that's true. I which gets the team more money because I think if you if you qualify for the owners chase, you you get like a bonus too. There's so that might be something that I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, because uh, when Junior was out, the '88 team Gordon and Bowman they like missed by like a point or so, but they would have been in the owners championship, and oh. then the points and whatnot. Like say Bowman won Talladega. And made it to like the the round of eight in the owners championship. He'd get the points of that. It's it's really confusing these days. Yeah. I never like the owners. They made ever since the top thirty five rule came in. The owners points always got more and more complex than they needed to be. Where it's like it original originally, and this is a point to bring up to to argue Kyle Busch winning in twenty fifteen is the original meaning for the owners championship was to put more effort on a total team so that if the team lost the driver, the entire season wasn't just a waste, and they would get money for the owner's title. Meanwhile, the driver would get the driver's one. And then it just sort of turned into a non-factor until the top 35 rule came in. And from there, it's just no fans really have liked it since then. Yeah, I I didn't know that until I looked it up. Yeah, I really don't pay attention to the owner's championship to be honest. Just it, it usually lines up with the driver's championship yeah. for the most part, except yeah. in like I don't think it ever has. I don't it's, think it ever has not lined up with the driver's championship I mean, and cup. The Xfinity the Xfinity series is where it gets interesting because you always have like the eighteen car, the twenty two car, you're like going at it. The sixty of, like, back in yeah. the day was always up there. Yeah, because the 33 was up there. The, back when Junior Motorsports had just one car, the 88 always had like a thousand drivers. Like, I remember there was like, oh, I want to say they had a guy named Kaufman or something in, right? And he got hired in like June. The July race came along for, for Chicago, and I'm like, oh, is that Kaufman? And my uncle's like, no, Junior fired him already. It's some guy named Brad Keselowski. He'll probably be gone in a month, oh, too. Um, Shane Huffman. That was Huffman, yeah. yeah. Sh- Shane Huffman. That Huffman, and I remember Robbie Gordon was in that car for a while. Where he came from? Because he had before Keselowski, he had um, well, the first driver's name was Mark Mark McLaughlin, and um, and Chad McCombie was in there. Yeah, I was like, and and then after 
after Brad left in 2009, Kelly it, became, Byers. It, it, it was a sim, it was a similar situation. It kind of went to so many people. Like Elliot Sadler was in it for a little bit. Kelly Byers did it for a little uh, who bit. Was, who was that one guy? It was an older guy. He, he, Greg oh, Sachs. Greg, Greg Sachs. Sachs. Oh, he did that one race. He he yeah. did the he did the race where um, uh, junior did, one in the three junior car. one in the three car. And the only reason he got to drive in that one is because he owned that GT Vodka company that come on to sponsor it. <laughs> yeah, I, I always wondered why that that sponsor went away after a while. And what was so weird about that team that year is that before the season started, they said, "Yeah, Kelly Byer is going to come drive this car full time." He didn't even show up to Daytona. Dell Junior drove it at Daytona. <laughs> And yeah, I, remember him wreck, I remember him wrecking at um um I went to the Vegas race that year. He wrecked there too at like lap thirteen. And I think like after a few more races, they were like, no, we're done. I think he only had one decent race, and that was Bristol. I think he got a top ten, and that was about it. I, I'll say, say what you will about Junior. Maybe he's he's my he's been a little more lenient the last few years. Say what you will about him being a driver, but it's not talent wise, yeah. For, like he is like if you don't perform for like so I remember Shane Huffman one year he was like in the top ten in points and then Junior like the next year like you know fired him then brought him on part time again he like did all right for a few races did bad and won and he was gone it's like I would not want Dale Junior as my boss to fire or drive him like he's he's a little more lenient now I mean he's given Ellie Sadler plenty of chances but Sadler's been decent and good and. But it's Sad. like back in the day, it's like you could not please man unless you were well, Brad Keselowski. Well, Michael Nets is still there. I don't know why, but he's still there somehow. He, he, he's still there because he can bring in sponsorship. Like is that, like his dad's company or something? No, I, I, like the the Haslam's own pilot. They, I think, father-in-law. Yeah. Was that which one is it? One of them? Because I remember somebody has a funny quote. Oh, I, I think I think it is his father-in-law because. Uh, Cause like he wrecked somebody back in the day when he was like in like that one car team and the guy's like, Oh, I don't know. You know, we can't come back cause we're an underfunded team, but I mean, his, his daddy in law will pay for his car to come back. So he'll, he'll crash next week. Was that when he was driving with Tommy Baldwin? Might yeah. Have been. He was in the 46. And I think that was, uh, it might've been at Bristol where Cobbler spun out. He just drove right into him. No, that wasn't, I don't think that wasn't Michael and Ned. I think that was all guyer. The Bristol Twenty Seven. Yeah, Allgaier. I think um, replaced him for that race for some reason. They, they all blend in for me at this point. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. They're all the same driver, yeah. just look a little different and sound a little different. <laughs> like it's the same guy that comes in, does a serviceable job, and then they just get the next guy to do a serviceable job. Yeah. Let's see. Chat. What do you think? Speak to us. Wonderful job. It's still like a Greg Sachs name. They're really going going nuts with that. What if, yeah, what if, I, I have a feeling it's the young demographic. Probably. What if what if NASCAR did some dumb stuff like a Fortnite tournament for the drivers winner gets like fifty k? I they, I think that would be kind of dumb, honestly. Like you said, uh, we got the modern chase. We got enough dumb. <laughs> AB sixty eight. Should I make a Twitter? Go yes. for it, but you'll probably be kicked off. I, I've actually been suspended twice on Twitter. For what? What? Yeah. Well, it, one. Uh, I forgot one of them. I forgot what I said. And then there's another one where this woman was like calling me a bunch of bad names and stuff, and like a failed abortion or whatever. And so I used something that that a, that a uh, I used something that a guy I follow was because this woman was really big. I was like, I, I waited about a minute or two. I'm like, sorry, it took so long to respond. I was uh, bench pressing your profile picture off of me. <laughs> and I got I got in trouble for that. And I got I was like for a week. I'm like I went into sign to my account and it wouldn't let me. I'm like, shit. NASCAR I, NASCAR need to bring back the Monte Carlo. Okay, there's a couple things wrong well, with that. That's mm, not NASCAR's decision. That's Chevy's. And plus, I don't even think Chevy makes the Monte Carlo no more. Yeah, they're talking about bringing. The, I, I think I said it mon this Monday too. They're talking about bringing the Monte Carlo and the Chevelle back, but it's just rumors. Weren't this. they talking about bringing like two new man manufacturers into the sport again? I, I yeah, read that. yeah, but but it, I was, think it, was, it was rumored Dodge was supposed to be here this year. I also read somewhere where like Mercedes was considering it, but I'm like, uh, I'm not, I'm not really sure about that one. Yeah, Let's see, Taz what Taylor happened? said that they that he uh wanted me to to read something that I that he tagged me, and I gotta I gotta go through and check really quick. 
but someone, keep talking and I'll say someone asked what happened to Robbie Gordon Robbie Gordon is somewhere is racing trophy trucks right now well last thing I heard about him was like his, sad his, news like yeah, his dad. His dad, yeah his dad um yeah. murdered his mom or something like that yeah, yeah like it was like ago. that was messed up I think it was last year actually because it was yeah I think it was either last year or the year before because it, it was 26 because I remember reading about it uh, about it I think around that time yeah, I don't. Yeah, like, I was on my way to to yeah. go in Chicago that year. Jesus, God, I didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was messed up. I like, I, yeah, was a, I'm not the biggest Robbie Gordon fan, but I was like, oh my god, like, yeah, it was a big everything. story. It was on like right. CNN, ABC News. All oh, that. okay, I think this is it. Um, where is it at? Yeah, let me let me scroll up. So yeah, there was like a Jeff Gluck thing where he was talking about how uh, Kyle Larson defending the one and a half mile tracks. Um, I'll, I'll just read it. Jeff Gluck put Kyle Larson defends 1.5 mile track racing, says there's nothing wrong with the current package and says it's only gotten better since he's been in cup. That's a lie, but the complaints have gotten worse, which puzzles him. And then junior put, I agree with Kyle, for example, and this is one I don't agree with, but, but I do agree with that. The Texas race is awesome. For me, the new all-star package is just reaction to how shitty the racing is at night at, at the particular tracks. And the over and overall is too many 1.5 mile versus short track races and road courses on the schedule. And uh, Taz put Wow Earnhardt speaking the truth, and he tagged us three in it. Um, I went. I went through what I said. Yeah, I mean, I went through. Oh, yeah, I liked. I think I actually liked Larson's tweet because I do agree. I think the mile and a half racing has gotten better. I agree with that part. I think it's gotten better in this in the last three years. I think the 2017-2018 package is better than we had, say, in 2013. 2013 was terrible for a mile and a half. Yeah. It was god 2013 awful. 2013 was bad. Uh, 2015 was bad. bad, too. So I'm saying and since um, then, yes, it's gotten better. And Texas was great. Atlanta was good, except for uh, Harvick winning and dominating. And I could argue the same for Vegas. I don't know. Neither of them were outstanding races. They're both very average races, I would say. But I would say for mile and a half, they're slightly above average. Well, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't get. I don't know. I don't get the hate for mile and a half tracks. That I, 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 agree. I, I respond. The past few years, they've been pretty good. Like they the, should, there should be less for sure, but only if, like one or two less. I think they should get rid of one or two and replace them with short tracks. I responded to him saying, "Yeah, I've been to some great one and a half mile tracks, like uh, races like Chicago and 2007, 2011, and 2014." But I agree that the night races, like night races, especially at already high grip tracks just make the racing worse because it's just one uh one groove the whole time. I that that's what I hate about the fact that the 600 is always, you know, now 3 fourths of it's at night. It's like back in the day when it was like 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 look at the 2007 race. I never realized this even with two red flags and clean up and a bunch of cautions. Um that race still the the 300 lap mark was still under daylight. Same with that 2008 version of the race. And those races were really good. But yeah. now you look at it and it's like once it gets to night, it's just stay on the bottom, try not to spin out. Don't try to slip up off the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't I don't I can't remember the last time at a night race at uh at Charlotte that anyone tried going higher than the middle groove. No, you're right. I, I I do agree with the the night racing comment. I think that's fair. That's why I'm I'm glad they moved the Texas fall race. No, nope, my bad. Spring race to the afternoon again. For a couple years ago, it was a Saturday night race, and it was it had I think the tw- one of the I went to the 2012 and the 2013 night races, and I can't remember which one. I think they're both very average races all all the way around. But I'm glad they switched it back to a day race. 2012, I think only the top 10 finished on the lead lap. Yeah, so I think I'm thinking of the 2013 race was not bad. I think Kyle Busch won that race, and it was, you know, yeah, it was a race. Yeah, thir- that, w- that was pretty good. Uh, but uh, the mile and a half in general in 2013 s- stunk. It, it was the, the issue came with like they gave uh, Kansas progressive banking back then, and that was just that's just a bad idea all the that way was just around. A crash fest. It's just it was it made it it was a one groove racetrack kind of in this awkward not right on the white line where it was easy for people to, to get there and stay there it was right in, like in the weird middle of the track. It has gotten better though, especially like from about 2014 on. Everyone can use the top side a lot better now. Mm-hmm. I, oh no, it's I gotten like better. Kansas has definitely gotten better. I, Chicago and maybe I'm biased, but I don't think the racing there is that bad. They can use all the the racetrack like there. Then like. I think 2014 was the greatest showcase of that with that three wide pass for the win Keselowski had. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at the same time, 
it's like I noticed this past like 2017 the the race was awful it was the most boring Chicagoland race I've ever been to everyone just stayed on the bottom for half the run then stayed on the top the rest and the only exciting parts of those races was when Kyle Busch messed up on pit road I think it was twice other than that it was just a dull event but I mean Vegas though you can't I mean talk about boring sometimes man since they re re um redid the track in 07 it's just been uh, I would say maybe the racing at the beginning was good and stuff, but now like it's just I I go I I've been going to the races every year since 2013. Um, 2013 was actually my first ever um cup race I went to. I was like I was excited to be there, but it was just disappointing. I really didn't expect the racing to be like that boring. I mean, the only exciting part was that um finish when um Kenseth passed Kane and stuff, or when Kenseth and Kane were battling mm. on the last laps for the lead. But other than that, it was just pretty. I don't know, it's just pretty dull. And even this race, this year's race in March was wasn't all that great either. I, I want to ask your guys' opinion on something yeah. really quick. Uh, fuel mileage races, like, can you do you guys like? I know we're not. It's not the best way to finish a race, but uh. I don't know, like some fuel mileage races more than others, though, but it, some of them are really actually, it, it kind of brings that drama once people, you see people start to run out and stuff. Like, I, I, I want to ask your guys. Opinions. I like fuel miles races. I, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, it makes for an interesting thing to watch. I think, I think it's more interesting to watch on TV because you can kind of understand what's going on more. If you're watching it in the stands, it can kind of be a little bit more confusing. But if you're watching it on TV, it makes it pretty exciting because I know. 2009 Michigan race when Brian Vickers won. That was a very interesting race because Dale, Dale Jr. had it set up where he had to do nothing but just but just fly through the field where everyone else was trying to stretch it. Dale Jr. almost got up to uh, Vickers from like wherever he come from. He got up a second. Like 20, I think with like 20 to go. It was yeah. And then and then the one before that, um, Johnson ran out the white flag. Biffle ran out on the back stretch, and Martin ran out in turn three and had to coast all the way back to win. Um, I, when I was there in 2011 at Chicago, um, you know, oh, Stewart that. was oh, yeah, was Stewart good. was going, uh, Junior was going through the pack, but like with about four to go, like I think uh, I forgot who it was, one of the I think Boyer or someone ran out. And then with three to go, a few more ran out. And then with two to go, Jeff Gordon and a few more ran out. And then with like on the last lap, it's like because I think Junior was like sixth. All of a sudden, he jumped up to third at the finish, and it was like Kenseth ran out, Kyle Busch ran out, Biffle ran out. It's like all these guys, Jimmy Johnson, all these guys up front, Paul Menard, all ran out of fuel. And it was like, damn, like I have to, like, and it was right at the start of the chase too. And I'm like, where the hell is everyone? <laughs> yeah, it's it's still uh, someone brought up a good point. Like another good race, as for well, good but sad for me. Uh, in terms of fuel mileage, was the 2011 uh, Coke 600. I was just Del, about to talk about that. Del, too. Del, mm. Del Jr. had it won until the last corner. And I think I think some cars were like running out of gas, like on the pace laps too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I think, well, and even and even on the restart, Casey Kane, like he was leading the race at the time, he just ran out of gas, like right at the start finish line. Yeah. So, well, Fuel mileage racing made uh made Pocono gave Pocono one of its best finishes ever in uh, I think it was 2015. Yeah, like, you had, like Kyle Busch and Logano battling late, and they both ran each other out of fuel, and then like I can't remember somebody took the lead. It might have been actually might have just been Kyle Busch held it for a little while, and then he ran out with like two to go, and Kenseth ended up winning. It was and like yeah. wasn't it wasn't pretty similar this year like like what was past year? I mean, wasn't Blaney like close to running out? They might be close. This year had a good finish. Actually, that's true. Last yeah. year didn't have a good finish with Blaney and uh, Harvick. But yeah, you know, honestly, if if I knew I, if I knew in advance that it was going to be a few mile race and a really good one, depending on what kind it would be, I would actually show someone who hadn't watched a sport before. I'm like, watch this. Like, watch the end of that Pocono race, and like, tell me who's going to win and the drama to it, and like, follow it a as you go because it's like you few mile races more than anything. I think show how much of a team sport it really is. Like I, I know one guy, he ran out because the fuel guy didn't get all all the gas in the car, and he ended up running out through the tunnel turn. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like 
that could have been the difference between an entire season's worth of effort going to nothing in the chase or whatever. You know, and it's put, like the drivers play games with each other's heads too. Like I think back to Watkins Glen last year, Truex won the race. And it felt like that whole like last run, you had a few guys pushing it. I think Boyer was up there pushing it. And there was, was. there was mm-hmm. a few guys that were up there close. So they, they just pushed it too much. And you got the impression they got in each other's head, you know, and, and Truex, you know, cool, calm got won the race. That was, I thought that was, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. In general, I, I like fuel mileage. So I got a question. I wanted to talk about this in the this live stream thing. So, like, what do you guys think of NASCAR drivers as athletes? Because, um, my opinion, it's just one of the most. And I mean, uh, NASCAR drivers just get so much disrespect when it comes to being an athlete and stuff. You know, and like compared to other sports and stuff. Like, I literally have to argue like with people like all the time about it and stuff. You know, the people that say it's not a sport, they're just going around in circles, going like. And my argument is like, dude, they're going 200 miles an hour. Like, I don't know, like an average speed of like 180 at some tracks and they go 200 Here, miles for like four hours, something like that. Here's like, my, here's my argument. If you think you feel tired and bored after driving three hours of interstate, imagine how they feel having to fight that heavy car for, right. for at two, over 200 miles an hour for four hours. I just know like what in summer races, these drivers will sweat, lose 10 to 15 pounds of water just from the working hard during the race. Like NASCAR, you know, you know, obviously it's not, these drivers aren't the same kind of athletes, football or basketball players. Basketball. Are. I'll say, but, but like, feel, though. exactly. Like if you're going to say golfers are athletes, you got to give it to NASCAR because golf, you're walking around, you're riding a golf cart, but then for a few seconds here and there, you got to line up and hit a nice shot. Very precise. Not, you don't have to be the strongest guy to be good at golf. But There's more to it. Uh-huh. But, but yeah. shoot, what do you, what do you, what is even considered a sport anymore? Does the national spelling bee is on ESPN? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I got a little bit. I agree wholeheartedly. I recently did a video uh, saying NASCAR is a sport, and I took the definition of a sport and explained each one why it is. I, and I, I feel like it was pretty definitive. I haven't got a dislike on it yet, so I'm assuming it, it was pretty definitive. But um, but like people like I used to go to school with it. Like, oh, I can, it's just driving. My dad does that every day in his, in his Ford. And it's like, it's not that easy. It's like, we would, like, I live in Northern Illinois. And like, when I was like 17, I got a bunch of people in my car. I'm like, we're going to drift around the parking lot. And, you know, it's very close quarters towards the back of it with trees and stuff in it and, and, and snow piles or whatever. And I took us about 30 miles an hour drifting around, right? And they're, all, and, you know, they're all on the edge of their seat. They're like, holy crap, you know, and, 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 I'm going around and drifting and going fast and going around cars, you know, and, and they're thinking it looks easy. Right. So we get in this other guy's car and he's like, I'm going to try it. He goes, he goes to about maybe 20. He doesn't even go as fast as I did. Goes to try and turn. Can't go straight into a snow pile. We had to dig his car out. And it's like, if he thinks that driving in snow at 30 miles an hour is difficult, like try driving on a track that's just as slick when it gets hot at 180, you know, like that amount of talent, hand-eye coordination, on top of the physical conditions they have, there is no way in hell you can tell me these drivers aren't athletes. I'd like to debate some of that, honestly. Like, sure. give me a sports dude that covers something and have him debate me on it. I've done, I've done, I did speech in in and debate in high school and stuff. I actually, I've actually debated a few people on that before, and won by a landslide. I mean, it just made him look stupid. Even just me, I'll get on i racing for like an hour not even go into a race just go into a test session i like to get into a sprint car and run around the dirt track at charlotte that is a big enough work I, I start to sweat even even like i keep the temperature the same as it is right now i'm fine right now but when i get into i racing i'm just have to work the wheel and use the pedals the whole time i literally start to work up a sweat because it's that much of a mental workout <laughs> tag nation cough tyt <laughs> yeah they're great and they have covered nascar stories better than any other YouTube channel I've seen and certain ones like I, I, I forgot what the last one was. It was something about Dale Jr. But I, I will give them credit. They've they've given at least enough respect that I can say. But I yeah, I agree. They're not I saw their video they did they did a video like asking and even the guy who watches it was like, mm, I guess they're it's probably not. And it's like you can tell these guys have no idea what they're talking about. And that's what it comes to. It's it, the the debate always goes to people who know about racing and people who don't. And there, there's, it's pretty definitive of, of who, who thinks it's a sport and who doesn't, you know? 
<laughs> and AB68 yeah. just racing a 15 minute test at Charlotte can then would make me sweat bullets. <laughs> what else, chat? What do you guys think? Come on. We've been going at this for goodness. We're close. We're at two and a half hours. We can yeah. start wrapping up if you guys want. I was about to say we we can we, we can get one last question and then we'll start to wrap it up. Yeah. So fire away. Jeff Gordon is the goat. Is that a question? Because uh, I will debate that. <laughs> nah, we'll, I will too. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it. Someone someone did say Darian is the goat. Yeah, it's less debatable. Who's the goat? <laughs> Who? Darian, you. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> What's the craziest finish to a race you've ever seen? Oh, damn, that's a toughie. There have been some crazy ones. Oh, and then really quick, um, I forgot who it was on the stream the other day, but after this, we'll do a favorite one one win wonder because I, I couldn't answer that question on the stream. So oh. craziest, oh. craziest. Finish. Craziest finish I saw, um, Talladega 2009, the spring race. That was That was insane. Oh yeah. Um, I was like oh, when um, when Edwards yeah. was in the air, I just like I lost. I was like, "Oh my god." I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah. And then I lost it even more when I found when when um when uh, Brad when uh, Kislowski won the race too. I was like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I got that, one. That was a huge upset. I got one. Um I, I think it's hard it's hard to really like argue against that one. Do you guys remember that Xfinity race? Where uh, Chris Busher, I think it was one of the Bushers, won it, but they were like in twelfth going into to uh, uh, coming out of four, and Daytona. every one of the leaders kept crashing at Daytona. Daytona yeah, twelve. Yeah, that was incredible. It's like, oh Kyle Busch, no, nope. oh Stewart, no, nope. oh Junior, no. Nope. Uh, it's like, who the hell is who the hell is Busher? Do you guys remember the race? I think it was at Richmond, but I don't know for sure. It was that I think it was at a smaller track. It was an Xfinity race. I, I don't know enough details, but there's two Roush cars I remember. Dang it, you took four. mine. You oh, took mine. Iowa. Oh, Iowa, yeah. Iowa, yeah. 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 They, they blew a tire come out of turn four, and they crashed each other across the line. No, I'll let you no, tell no, them. No, no, no. He, he, okay, I, I know exactly what it was. It was like 2011, I'm pretty sure. It was 11. It was, it was, 11. It was, it was Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was in the lead, and he didn't have like any sponsors. Like He, he was basically in a, in a solid white car. He's in the lead. Comes off of turn four. Carl Edwards is, be is directly behind him trying to catch up to him. He blows his engine. Smoke cloud. Edwards plows right into him. And, right. he, push exactly. and, he, push and he pushes Stenhouse to the win. That was yeah. incredible. I yeah, that's, that's, that's the craziest I've seen. Yeah, that's the craziest one for me. Mm -hmm. Now, right. you've talked about one-hit wonders. Yeah, one-win wonders. I, I couldn't think of a good one on stream. Trevor Bain, pretty much. That's fun. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, Casey Mears. He won the Coke 600, and that's it. Does he really only have one win? Yeah. Yep. yep. One um, cup win and one uh, Xfinity win. Wow. I'm shocked. I thought he had at least five or six. Oh, no. And as far as another series, um, Michael McDowell, I think he won a road course race for Joe Gibbs and, and oh, Xfinity series, one. and that's it. I know one. Wasn't it Rusty with Rusty Walrus? Damn it. Well, Rusty Walrus said it. Uh, Gilliland back in 2006, unsponsored cart Kentucky. Oh yeah, that was probably that has to be the best one. Yeah, I, I that was. What, team, what 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 team was that with? I don't even know. It which was just. I think it was some nobody team that he literally had signed with that Thursday for one week. Like wow. he ended up like were they running like any like they actually didn't have a full pit crew, and so every time he'd he'd go up take the lead, and then a caution would come out. He'd pit, be back in like. 15th have to come back up and take the lead and they finally got a long green run i didn't and, know that, uh, that's the best one hit wonder then yeah i get i gave him granted all the cup guys weren't there that that because there was a race like i think the only cup guy there was um um i think it was jj yelly and then it it count. Count. <laughs> yeah jj yelly i don't think would ever count as a cup yeah. guy <laughs> how, how do you think jj yelly feels knowing that he was in kyle bush's car before kyle bush got to it I feel uh, like he probably yeah, feel like I would. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I didn't realize it was that bad. He actually won the poll at the second race I ever went to at Michigan in 2007. And I was like, wow, you know, the eight car, he kind of looks like how Bobby Labonte used to, right? And then it's like, I think he finished like 29th. Yeah, and the bus and like seven down. 
Yeah, in the bus video I made, I made the argument. I was like, well, what did he do in the Xfinity series to move up? What was called the Bush series at the time. But what did he do? Like, um, in 2005, he, fin he he didn't even finish in the top 10 in, in, the, uh, in the standings in Joe Kibbs' equipment. And then they just moved oh. him up into the ride in 2006. I think for the, I think um, they only did that um, because there wasn't really anyone um, big at the time, I guess. I think Kurt Busch he had just signed. Um, he um, he had all he had um, decided to move over to Penske already, and uh, I don't think there was any like top free agents at the time either. Hey, uh, here's 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 another one, and it's still way too early to be saying he's for sure going to be a one a one win wonder. But uh, I mean, I was happy to see him win last year. But I mean, Jeremy Clements could possibly be one. He won that he won that road course race last year. But too early. I'll give him a chance. I'll give him a yeah. chance. Still. And it's it, it's still too early. But I mean, he has been racing for quite a few years now. It seems like. Yeah, I didn't know this, but he actually made his debut in two thousand and three. I had no idea. Yeah. Holy crap. crap! Oh yeah, I didn't know that. I thought he was a young gun. Yeah, he made yeah. his. Um, no, no, he made his debut at. Um, I think it was on um, Pike's Peak, two thousand and three. Damn, that was a long time. I was watching some old races and I saw him there. I was like, holy crap! It's and then, so, yeah, I mean, he's, he's been around for a while. Yeah, fifteen years. That's weird to think. And okay, I gotta ask. In last in week, in the chat, in the chat, what incarnation is he's. he's He's there. Has anyone else noticed, like, on every NASCAR video, I find him in the in the comment section? Uh, I know, like, Darian, he's been in a few of yours. Yeah, he's been yeah. in a few oh, of yeah. Double E's. Yeah, he's yeah. been in mine. Uh, Danny, I've seen him in yours. I've seen him in Kamikaze's once. I've seen him, like, everywhere. It's like, man. It's he, like, he just watches everybody, it seems like. You're good, man. This dude probably knows all the dirt on everyone. He's just going to come out with an exposed video. I think I saw him um, in the live stream yesterday for the uh, the um, that iRacing series. What is it called? The the Peak Anti Freeze series, something like that. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. that. I think I saw him in that too. Oh, uh, Tyler Johnson. Yes, I do remember the second Pocono race that that finish that Gordon won. See, I remember it though. Like, and I don't want to be able to press him, but I will be for a, a bad reason. Uh, is because a fan, a fan actually got struck by lightning and died that race. Like, oh, and that's, that's why one. that's why Pocono does their thing now for weather, where it's like, listen, if you can't make it, we'll give you your money back. Is because they don't want fans thinking that they have to stay in the stands the whole time. Yeah, where did so, like I guess look at though in the parking lot or was it in like? Uh, he was like right near the stands. And he like like right outside of the area. You know how like most of the tracks have it like fenced or whatever. Yeah. I guess he was like right outside walking to to their they're walking to the car and just, oh man, he's yeah. It was like uh, damn. What incarnation said he's only twelve? Well, that explains it. Rusty Waller says we should get him on the get him on the show next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm only twelve. Oof, but it would be an honor. <laughs> Sounds like you got a pretty good uh, humor, though. Uh, I'll call you Wick. Wick, yeah, Wick. Saying what incarnation I, is... I, I, I just call him Lightning McQueen because I can see Lightning McQueen as his profile picture. Oh, uh, I, I say Wick just because he can think of maybe being like John Wick. You're a badass, Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Taz Taylor, special guest. I think one thing we do have to tell the chat is like, like look at any other live stream... They don't just invite everybody on, you know. It's like, yeah. um, well, there was just, that last time on my channel, but it was my fault for having a horrible idea, and it 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 will be in a uh, compilation one day of worst live stream decisions ever, which mm -hmm. I take full responsibility yeah. for. Darren, yeah. I don't know if you saw this or not, Darren. But <laughs> Yo, he, I would, you would know if you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it was it, it was the it was the off week for NASCAR. Nothing was going on, so we didn't have much to talk about. We decided it'd be fun to put the link to the hangout in the chat. Oh, well, that, God. Got, that got really bad really fast, and we yeah. had to. I, I I quickly removed the the comment where people couldn't see it or click on it, and I had to. I was just like, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm clicking you all off of here, and we we, we just kept we just kept like three of them on there. It was Rusty Walrus. Um, I, uh, Nas, uh, Iron, Iron, yeah, and then Iron and then Man. Jake. Oh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it was, it was, it was. It, it got to the point but, where like I was just uncontrollably laughing. It was just like show everyone doing all this stuff. There was people climbing on top of people and different ones, and then there's me like crying. 
<laughs> yeah, it and, was a great moment. And then we had the classic moment where we tried to drink a water bottle in one second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was bad. That's impossible. That's no, a, it's not. It's not impossible if you look it up. Someone really? actually has done it. I had to share the video, and we're like, I'm like watching it because someone's like, "Oh, have you tried this?" And I'm like, "Okay, I'll watch the video." And just, I start uh, laughing. Just go, go look it up after this. Not right now, but go look it up after this. Gotcha. I'm just sitting here, uh, Tyler. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I, I, I think it's amazing the difference between our, our time, our time zones and everything, because it's been dark here ever since I started. It's just now gotten dark where Darian's at. Yeah. It's, um, what time is it? Oh, damn. It's almost 8 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I, I wish it was almost 8 o'clock. It's 1042, almost 11 o'clock here. <laughs> yeah, we, we should we should probably wrap this up. We're closing on three three uh, three hours. I got yeah. I got stuff due. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Same. Uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and start wrapping up here. Um, right now, I'll start with me. Um, I've been hosting that. I'm Danny, Danny B Talks. You can, you're obviously watching me right now. If you are watching and you haven't subscribed yet, what in the world are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. Click the notification bell so you know when I upload in the future. Um, what have I done this week? Um, the other, like yesterday morning, I put up a video, my 14 thoughts from WrestleMania 34. If you haven't seen it yet, Please go watch it. It was my mistake for uploading it so early in the morning. I should have scheduled it to go out later because like nobody really was notified about it. My bad. But please go watch it. It's available to go watch now. Um, I, as far as what I plan on working on, I may not be able to get to anything this week, but probably next week I'll probably plan on doing a couple of things. Maybe like uh, I might be wanting to do uh, my – probably my top 10 favorite paint schemes in NASCAR would be a video I'm going to be doing out sometime soon. And another thing, I want to wait till after this weekend's Talladega race to see if there's any big moments, but I want to maybe do my my top moments from Talladega in all of like NASCAR history. And uh, other than that, though, you know, just keep keep uh, keep watching my channel. Um, I've got a vlog to put together from my attempt to watch Bristol. It didn't spoiler alert. I only got to watch a little bit of it, but uh, other than that, though, I'll I'll slap it on over to the iceberg. Yeah. Uh on the iceberg you can subscribe to my channel uh follow me at twitter at ice titan 80 at gab.ai on at iceberg um also while well, while we're on mine and it's my closing statement i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen and i'm gonna tell you what you need to get you need to get this shirt oh god <laughs> right here this beautiful shirt this expressive expressive man named paul menard you need to get his shirt and uh god damn how do i get off of this thing Looks oh good. here it is <laughs> and uh yeah so get that uh i'll be working on a few videos this week i don't know if i'll have it out or not and then also might be interviewing someone don't know about that either yet uh we're gonna be on my channel i believe this week wednesday uh eight o'clock eastern time and seven central because i'm done with time zone so i have to remember that and with that, I'm going to pass it over on over to Eric. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for watching. You can find me uh, on YouTube, Doubly Dud. Uh, I have a groove every week. Uh, yeah, now let's talk about that. And I, I like, yeah, you're right, Tyler. I do have uh, two presentations in a final. Thanks for remembering that. I, I tried a live stream the other night, and I think it went last for about seven minutes before my internet and my entire apartment complex shut down. But he remembers that from the title, so I appreciate that. Uh, you can check out my latest uh, uh, Out of the Group episode from earlier today if you want to look at how you can be a sponsor of that show going uh, going forward down the road. I appreciate that. Trying something new, trying to get uh, more people involved and see where that goes. Uh, but, yeah, thanks, guys, of course, always for having me on. And uh, thanks to Darian for, for being on tonight. Uh, thanks for spending – goodness, it's been – yeah, he, you've been on for like oh, two hours now. So th thanks for spending so much time with us here tonight. And thanks, everyone, in the comments for being so active and asking questions. I'll see you again next week. All right. So first off, I want to say thank you guys so much for the support. Really. Um, I started this channel back in 2016. Um, only had like about 55 subs. And uh, like I said it in, earlier in the video, when I, when I first got on, had a ton of schoolwork and stuff. So I decided to put it on hold and stuff. And then I upload uh, my first video um, on December 30th. And now we're already into April and I'm almost at 2000 subs. And that would not happen without you guys. Like, um, you guys um, keep suggesting um, new ideas and uh, for videos I should do, um, what drivers I should talk about and stuff. And uh, it's been very helpful. And um, also, I never got to say this, but 
I don't know if NASCAR Nixon will see this, but uh, thank you so much for helping my channel out, man, from the very beginning. You are the best. And um, like, I, like I say in my video, this is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time. Hmm. All right, and guys, I want to thank you all very much for joining us this week. Uh, special thanks to all the guests we had here this week. Um, with that being said, this has been Danny from Danny B Talks, and this has been the weekly NASCAR live stream. And I invite you to come back in the future. Thanks, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you in the future. Thank mm -hmm. you.